Check Mike one two said what you gonna do? Get killed by a xenomorph one or two. Yep. Or maybe three hundred. Nick knack paddywhack give a xenomorph a bone. <laughs> Instead I'll bite your face with his inner mouth and drag you home. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh god, dear no. Please let me go home. <laughs> yeah, that one was good too. <laughs> yep. I was really wanting to make a uh twas the night before Christmas uh like poem, but like with the totally xenomorph related twists. Oh, that would have been dope. Yeah, but uh I definitely, I'm almost certain that I will decide to, uh, at the very least, uh, again, depending on how much people like these characters and like the ending, uh, whether or not people decide they want the story of this group of characters to continue or, you know, completely leave it behind for, you know, subsequent holidays, uh, we'll see where it goes. I mean, so long as you're doing sequels, there's a lot of holiday characters you can do. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I mean, and even, like, non-Christmas holidays, like, depending on how much mythology there is behind them. Like, I mean, there is, I really can't think of any with as much, I guess maybe Halloween. Easter. Like, again, Easter would actually be pretty yeah. good fitting. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be a really fun one. Like, dealing with the Easter bunny? Yeah, yeah, actually, I was or, uh, hilarious. That would be the Easter egg hunt from Hill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. You know what? I like it. I love it. I love it. The Easter the hunting egg for hunt eggs. from Hill. Yeah. Beautiful. You know what? I'm going to send that to... Uh, I'm gonna have to Could be a fucking... I would love to help in a bunny suit. Like write stuff for that, but then I want to play in it too, so yeah. yeah. Okay, I started yeah, I just up had to send the that to stream. My okay. So the way we're gonna start this, uh welcome everybody. Uh my name is Kyle. Uh I'm also a reptile lover in 1995, if you watch the Djibouti show or just generally see me on Twitch. Uh, I am the GM for this holiday special. Uh, I know it's a little bit late, but this is Act 2, and it takes me time to prepare, so yeah. We're going to try and at least, you know, get all of these done before, you know, the end of January. Um, but the way we're going to start this is, in case people who tune in now haven't tuned into the first act we're gonna introduce all of our characters uh we are going to summarize what happened in the uh previous act and then we're gonna continue uh from where we left off so who wants to start with um with their character i might as well get it out of the way i am galvanized dreamer and i'm currently playing as Jaden, a frustrated old man trying to deal with the failings of his youth while currently sitting unconscious due to xenomorph related injuries <laughs> yep uh, I'll fill in for uh, for uh, Mormon who uh, unfortunately couldn't be here today uh, he was playing Eb or Eb Masterson uh, 48 religious uh, he, age 48 kind of a religious fella uh he is uh, kind of the biggest member of the crew physically, uh, standing several inches taller than even the Colonial Marines. Uh, and he sees it as he sees the rest of the crew as his family, uh, and he would gladly uh, kind of throw himself in danger if it meant uh, protecting them. Uh, he is a roughneck like uh, like Jaden, but they both have you know different personalities. Uh, why don't we have Scott go next? Why don't we just go down the, uh, the list? Okay. I'm Fico Fox, and I'm playing Scott, the brilliant scientist who knows just about everything if it's not related to medicine or biology. The brother of the Captain Lucy. I am... Um, 
almost 40 years old. Okay. Cheese, cool, it's I got your a turn. Pro. Yep. Hooray for nepotism. I'm Cheeseburger, and I'm playing Ralphie. I'm nine years old. I don't have any parents, and I live on the spaceship with my fake family. Fake um, family? <laughs> that's what it says. It says fake okay. family. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I guess yeah, they adopted me. at a young age. Yeah. But anyway, I'm uh, pretty smart for my age, pretty <clears> mature, <throat> but I also am kind of a little shit. And <laughs> I'm out there to prove that I'm just as good as an adult at surviving in space. Also, I hate yep. John Kane because he acts like he's my dad, but he's not my dad. He'll never yep. be my dad. Okay. Speaking of John Kane. I am playing John Kane, and I am 42. I am formerly a sergeant. Uh, I fought on border disputes against the UPP. Um, so basically I retired and took up this escort mission offered by Wayland yutani so that I can make enough money to retire for good. My wife back home insisted on it. Um, she thought it would be less dangerous than the constant warfare that we were in. Uh, apparently not. Um, <laughs> and basically I just want to go home and raise my, my young boy. Um, Ralphie remind me of my son so i do boss him around a little bit and uh i'm sometimes strict with him but he's a little bit of a shit so <laughs> it's, uh, it's a thing <laughs> yep um i try to take control of you know some things as an officer but i'm not actually an officer uh, as far at as at least not anymore at least not officially yeah no. not, not an official officer but i do have a leading role uh, among, among the yeah. yeah, it's just you're yeah naturally kind of you're used to taking up that role. Okay, Lucy Rodriguez. All right, my name is Robobike. Uh, I'm playing Lucy Rodriguez. I'm age uh, 35, and I'm pretty chill. I'm pretty laid back. Uh, things have been you know generally been able to work out for me in my life. Uh, I was born. Uh, it, me and my brother Chris, uh, Scott were, were born into a relatively wealthy family, and uh, thus uh, I had access to piloting lessons uh, from the best teachers at, at a young age. And uh, using my family's wealth, I was able to uh, secure a ship called the Nakatomi, which I've used to fulfill multiple contracts for Wayland yutani uh, bringing terraforming prospectors to and from potential colonies. It pays pretty damn well. And uh, I've never ran into any real trouble aside from the occasional navigational complication, but never, not a single soul has ever died in my care. And I don't foresee that changing anytime soon, except it already has happened. Now I'm freaked the well, fuck out. Well, technically you didn't, she hasn't died as far as okay. you know. Well, I mean, I'm just we'll scared then. <laughs> we'll find yeah. out what happens. <laughs> yeah. She okay, was carried um, off, and we can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine what has happened to my best friend, Kate. There's nothing, Adam. nothing, John could have done about it. Yeah, right, John. I, I tried. <laughs> uh, yep. I took two damage, yeah. and I thought, well, I could die or I could leave. <laughs> oh, and hey, like I'm gonna, uh, like I said, you guys are allowed to cope with this in uh, whatever way you feel is best for your character. Uh, I think it was a very interesting turn of events that. Uh, you guys can use for really good role playing. So, uh, I've read Eb Masterson. Now, Bloody Mary Bailey, uh, she's 23. She's somewhat cocky. Uh, she was raised by abusive parents in a poor part of the Free World Empire. Uh, her real first name is Meredith, but uh, she goes by Mary Bailey. Uh, people call her Bloody Mary uh, because of her reputation. She began uh, service in the Colonial Marines primarily as uh, security for private industries, uh, suppressing riots and uh, stuff like that. Uh, that's where she developed her nickname. Uh, she was notorious for her enthusiasm and lack of hesitation in using force. Uh, secretly, she hoped that the discipline offered by the Corps would help her curb her crippling addiction to stims, but unfortunately things only got worse as she spiraled into dependency. And during one outing, she actually killed a bystander in a stim-fueled rage. 
uh, quick to pounce upon a potential opportunity, Wayland Yutani stepped in and took the young woman under her wing, under their wing, offering her an alternative to what would otherwise have been a dishonorable discharge and life of homelessness. They would provide her with the necessary medications to slowly wean herself off of the stim dependence and keep replicas over her incident secret, provided she worked exclusively for them as an on-demand security escort. Despite her misgivings about the many mega corporations, she knew she had no choice. Uh, but she still has a deep, deep resentment for Wayland Yutani because she knows they did this very, very deliberately. Uh, and then I'll read a little bit about Kate so you guys can remember about her. Uh, she worked her ass off to get her medical certification, but it was sheer chance that allowed her to bump into Rod Lucy Rodriguez at just the right time. Uh, Lucy was suffering from what could have become an ER-worthy case of alcohol poisoning, but Kate put her skills as, as a medic to rapid use and managed uh, to treat Lucy quietly and efficiently. Upon waking up, uh, Lucy gratefully yet drunkenly invited her to be the lead medic upon the uh, Nakatomi. Knowing the market, Kate eagerly accepted, uh, hoping she wouldn't that Lucy wouldn't change her mind upon sobering up. Uh, this meant that there was some very special paperwork uh, involved to get her honorably discharged from the Colonial Marines, where she was serving as a field medic. But the superior pay uh, of and job safety of the new offer made it all worth it. Uh, so. Yeah, ever ever since then, she's been she was the primary voice uh, in favor of safety on the ship, uh, which views which caused some of you to view her as a bit of a buzzkill. Uh, to her, this was wrong. She she enjoys thrills and fun as much as anybody, but she also cares more about her reputation, and she doesn't want any preventable deaths on her record. So related risks. Yep, that is where we. Uh, that is where we uh, end with characters. Now, who wants to go through what uh, what happened uh, last time? Uh, who remembers? I believe we got ambushed. A little bit, yeah. But uh, why don't we uh, start from the start from the beginning? I can talk from the beginning. try to give a synopsis if you want. Yeah, go ahead trying to remember the very beginning but I'm pretty sure uh, we woke up from our hibernation and it turns out we were way too early and pretty far off course yep and it was revealed soon after that there's a distress signal coming from a small moon orbiting a gas giant I guess probably yep and we were summoned down there to help them deal with some kind of problem that was not described yet. And basically when <laughs> we get correct. there, it's it's a snowy moon, and it's basically like the North Pole, Santa's village, there's elves there. Um, for some reason we don't really question the existence of elves. I don't know why, but it wasn't a thing. Um, it's a holiday special, goddammit. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's that. I think we just assumed that they were all midges because of the climate. Yep, that's fair. Yes, we found a species but, yeah, of pointy-eared dwarf humans. Something like that. Um, we get there, yeah. and they're having some kind of problem with their R&D lab. Apparently, they no longer make toys. They make spaceships. Yeah, so spaceship we go down there... And, uh... Uh, continue. Yeah, I was saying, yeah, they make spaceship parts and parts for, you know, colony uh, machinery that keeps things running. So, like, atmosphere processing parts. Right. So, anyway, uh, we go to investigate the powers out. There's a lot of evidence of weird shit going on down there. Uh, we manage to restore some power. We get an ID card and... We go down an elevator into an absolute hellhole. Nice. And what did you find there? A bloodbath of murdered elves, and not all of them were dead. Some of them were stuck to the walls in various state of some kind of transformation. And they were held by strange alien webbing and goo and whatever it was. And that's where you guys got ambushed by horrific creatures from beyond your worst nightmares. 
They took Kate, they su did something to Jaden, and you barely got out with your lives. I will note that uh, one thing is, uh, this isn't the L's uh, R&D division, it is, uh, what they told you was, this was a R&D division specifically set up by Wayland yutani that uh, the elves are not, they have nothing to do with it, in terms of uh, they are not allowed in, they are not uh, made privy to any information about it. So, it is just a Wayland yutani uh, R&D division that uh, that is made here. But, uh, yeah. Everybody, uh, everybody got that? Yep. I believe so. Okay. So, uh, we're Don't going forget, to start... we were rescued by Santa Claus at the end. Yep. Christopher Kringle. He, uh, yeah, he opened the elevator for you guys to, uh, to get out. Now, uh, we begin later in the infirmary. You guys have all kind of healed, because, uh, most of you were suffering for just minor scrapes, uh, but, uh, Jaden is still s sitting in a bed. He's been, uh, hooked up to an IV, uh, with a monitor that is showing off basic life signs, um, you know, heart rate, uh, blood pressure, etc. Things look normal, uh, and you guys see Macaulay Culkin, or Dr. Culkin, he's got a, uh, clipboard, uh, and Christopher Kringle, and uh, who you assume to be his wife, are also standing here with you. Uh, if I may interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, currently, if I if you don't mind me asking, did I take any damage from that? Um, you had taken one damage, but you've healed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So. Anyways. Uh. So. Dr. Colkin is uh gonna step in front here. He's going to uh he's he says uh, uh Jaden, uh it seems like you were uh injected with a uh a cocktail of toxins, uh one of which was an enzyme that uh drastically and very quickly lowers blood pressure. That explains why you immediately fell to uh that's why you immediately fainted. Uh we actually see uh, back on Earth, there are certain snake venoms that do the exact same thing. The myth of the uh, the hundred pacer uh, viper from Southeast Asia. The if you walk hundred paces and then you drop dead. It's actually the blood pressure that lowers. So this must be a uh, very similar toxin. Uh, there are hints of metalloproteases and other compounds, but the rest seems to be of uh, little medical significance. Um, although there are some postsynaptic neurotoxins that I was able to. Uh, neutralize most mostly but uh there may be some lingering pain and soreness in uh your muscles for the next few days that works now uh chris uh is gonna talk to all of you uh are you uh are you all ready for me uh I need to explain to you the current situation because things are not looking good and we need your help. The hell do you need from us? Look, I can repair your shuttle, but we need to destroy that Xenomorph Hive. Within one week, the powers that seal off the Hive at level B1, that level where I rescued, that, uh... That power will go off permanently. These creatures will be free to roam the entire surface of this planet. They will come in here. They will come in the factory. They will go everywhere. And uh, there's nothing we can do to stop them. Unless we destroy the, their hive first. Uh, you can see that he's seething with just barely controlled rage. Uh, and his wife actually has to kind of put her hand on his shoulder a bit. Uh, and on top of that... These Wayland yutani bastards, the ones who have been slaughtering my family, people I have known for longer than any of you have been alive. If you can find anything we can use to nail those fuckers to the wall, please bring it back and I will be in your debt. 
I hunger for justice and vengeance. If you need any additional supplies, you will likely find them uh, in the basement. That's where we store most of our tools and the like. But feel free to have a look around housing uh, before you return to uh, to the division to finish your work. I'm going to ask Chris, how did you stop the creatures before when the power was off in R&D? The power appears to be on two separate systems. Uh, the power that maintains that door, it stays shut unless someone opens it. So it's our fault that they're going to get out. Oh no, they were going to get out anyways. We just didn't know. Uh, we didn't know. This. We didn't even know what was there. It's only thanks to you that we know these creatures are there and that what's been happening to my dear friends. You see a single I'll tear fall down his face and he wipes it off. How the hell do you expect us to stop them? How do you expect us to destroy a hive? Look. We build industrial machinery out here. I can make you a bomb. All you need to do is get down there, attach it to the to the reactor core, and then get out. We'll have it on a uh, on a remote detonation, and that will blow that entire division to hell. Jesus Christ! I don't know. I don't know. Well, What's well, the alternative? There is no alternative. See my point? Would detonating something that low in the ground affect any of your other facilities? None of our other facilities go deep below ground, uh, and any damage would be uh, easily repairable. We have uh, We have a lot of very talented engineers around here. It seems like the best idea. It's all we've got. If we go back in, we have a chance. A chance of finding Kate again. We need to find her. If there's any chance that she's alive, we need to find her. Even if she's... I don't know. Hopefully they don't string her up on the wall like those others. Don't, don't you have some kind of magic powers you can use, Santa? What? You know, like the magic you used to make the reindeer fly? Boy. I think Ralph is watching a little too much TV. <sighs> also, do you have any more of that cocoa? Way. We'll find some in the cafeteria. I yell yippee and run out of the room around. towards the cafeteria. Feel free to grab your token. Yep. Find the cafeteria. Okay. Yep, you should be able to see it. Uh, straight north. Okay. Yep. Straight north. All the way at the top. Mm -hmm. The word cafeteria is hidden by the tables. <laughs> But you can tell it's the cafeteria because of all the tables. Yep. All right, I think. Yeah, I got maybe it. the rest of us should go down to the storage facility and see if there's anything we can use. Okay, so let me uh I'll follow you guys. Yep. While you're doing that, Doctor McCullen, is there anything that you can explain to me about these creatures and what they do to people? I have not observed them. Uh, I only know secondhand from what they did to you that. Uh, they weren't trying to kill you. Well, that's reassuring. What yeah. do you think they were trying to do to us? Uh, I have no idea. I know that uh, certain uh, parasitic wasps uh, will do something similar to spiders. Uh, they will paralyze them and uh, lay their eggs on their skin. And uh, the spider is completely helpless as their larvae uh, 
eat them alive from the inside out. Uh, I don't know the life cycle of these alien creatures, but could be anything from that to being a simple defense mechanism to protect against a threat. Sounds about dead on, if you ask me. About what we saw happen down there right before we got ambushed. He explains all the poor bastards on the walls. It doesn't explain the poor bastards in that poor facility. Dr. McCullen, do you have any other victims that I can look over, do a once-over to see if I can find anything out more out about these creatures? Uh, we don't have any victims. We All we know is that uh, three weeks ago, the R&D facility went missing. Uh, everything was great until then. There have been no fatalities. Uh, but since then, uh, a few elves have gone missing. Uh, I'm not sure if these things are related, but uh, if you find anything, please do let us know. We will. We definitely will. Well, I better uh, get to attending another one of my patients here. You see uh, a small female elf uh, has a broken wrist. He's uh, tending to it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you guys want to go downstairs? Let's get a move on. Get these, yeah. get these parts, get this bomb built so we can. Oh, yeah. You'll blow find this the. Uh, Yep, you'll find the bomb uh, in the uh, in the repair room in the uh, in the basement. If I can physically walk, I'd say yeah, completely. Yep. Oh yeah, you're completely fine now. Uh, he takes the uh, he took the IV and everything out. Uh, you're feeling fine. There's a lingering soreness, but uh, secretly, you've kind of had that for a while now. So now you just have an excuse for why it is an old age. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. I just, have, I just have to move. So can I regroup with you guys so we all head down together? Sure. Yeah, I'll go grab get, Ralphie. You while you your, hot your hot yep. chalky. Your hot chalky. Yeah, I just come back yep. with a giant like hot chocolate mustache and it's like kind of spilled yep. on the front of my shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Put that chalky down! <laughs> You hear from uh, milk. right around here, but yep, yeah, here we go. Now, uh, place your characters uh, at the uh, at the base of the stairs right here. You're looking. Can you ping it again? Yep, right here. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, now, uh, where do you want to go? <clears throat> These maps are giant. Yep, they are. What what room did he say the bomb was in? Uh, he said in the, uh, in the repair room. Okay, so that's up to the north. So we're going to have to, like, go here and then go here to get to the repair room. Yep, just, uh, yeah, the rest but of this let is Let me all... see. Yeah. WY room. It's a WY room. Uh, if you want to go over there, I can tell you what uh, what you see. Well, I'm scared as shit, so I'm going wherever. Whoever says we're going somewhere, I'm going with them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like hiding behind whoever's the biggest person right now. Like yeah, that'd be Ab. Shoulder. Yep, so, uh, let me... Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. I'm having to control these, too. Give me a second. 
Uh, let me. Did I grab? Did I put him there? Uh, Bloody Mary. There we go. Okay. So where do you guys, where do you guys kind of like want to go? Um, I'd say we make a plan for those explosives. Okay. Those of us that so, know how to use them, maybe ask the others to see if there's anything else of value. Maybe ask, go back and ask Chris whether or not he knows of anything that would be useful. I mean, Chris told you everything he knows. Uh, yeah. I, like, it all depends on what you guys are going to do. Uh, so we need to plant it down here somewhere as well? What? We need to plant the bomb somewhere down oh, here no. as well? Uh, oh, no. No, he was talking about the reactor core in the R&D division. Oh, uh, okay. That's a whole different place. Yeah. It's okay. in the bo it's at the bottom floor. Okay. So yeah, let's just go grab the bomb. Let's just Okay, let's just so fucking grab the bomb. Um... Get the fuck out of here. It's I'm freaking out. <laughs> I know it's not even stressed out yet. Come on, let's, uh, let's start with the bomb and see what else we can scrounge up. All right. Okay. I'm just start exploring down here since we don't actually know the layout. I'm going to go in dry storage. Okay. So uh the walls uh, of this room are lined with uh, pinups of sassy elves and beer posters. Uh, there's a metal workbench in the middle of the room. Uh, on the oh, back and right of the room are two storage cabinets. Uh, a few tools lie on top of the bench, and uh, these include uh, electronic tools, uh, which are which will give you contact plus one, and two broken uh, two broken personal data transmitters. Those can be repaired with a successful ComTech roll. Hey, Lou. Yeah, what's up? These electrical gadgets, you might be able to figure out how to fix them up. Yeah, let me, let me just... take a look at it. I'm pretty I'm pretty smart. I've got I've got I got my doodads here to fix electrical stuff. Oh, you're yeah, figuring that out. You catch Ralphie staring at an elf pinup. My pants feel funny. <laughs> Ralphie, stop that. <laughs> yeah, leave him alone. He's becoming a man. <sighs> I rolled. Uh, what did you get? Uh, I'm not... I... Oh, you got a success. Okay. So the cool. personal data transmitters are now repaired. Um, there we go. I got him, got him up and running, bro. That's personal data transmitters. Uh... Let me just make sure I have what. <laughs> yep, so <clears throat> these will transmit. Uh, these, you can wear them as an accessory. They will transmit uh, the recipient's location uh, as well as vital signs. How many are there? There are two. Okay, are uh, those PDATs? Uh, those are personal uh, data transmitters. Okay. So, yep, and then there's the electronic tools, so hand those out however you feel. It's up to you, Scott. All right. Hmm. I think John should get... John and Mary should get the uh, personal data transmitter since they should be the ones scouting. Okay. Yeah. And that way we can check on the rest of oh, them. Whoops. Didn't mean to uh, that somebody has... Who's got the highest comp deck? That would be Lucy. Mine's three, yeah. Okay, so either Lucy or I should get get the device. I'll let Lucy have it since I've also got three comp deck. Okay. Yep. You also notice that uh, there so wait, are... What, uh... what is the device? Can I add it to my gear? Oh, yeah. Just uh, It's just a bomb. Uh, it's... It's going to be, for narrative purposes, it's not going to count towards weight. But, yeah, just add, you know, reactor bomb. But yeah, uh, com score. coming through the the various, because uh, there's a bunch of unfinished projects here. Uh, you find one under the name B Blizzard. Uh, the device is egg-shaped, transparent, and has several layers of coil inside. Uh... It appears that there should be a switch or button attached to the top of it, given the connector wires from an opening. 
You might want to keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, Egg-shaped device with connector for a button. Yep. Uh, under the name B Blizzard. B Blizzard. Yep. How big is now, this device? Uh, it's about the size of a football. Okay. It, you, think um, should, you think we should hold on to this thing too? I say to Scott. Uh, it looks like it could be useful if we can find parts to finish it. Okay. I'll hold on to that too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if anybody who feels like their character would have uh, kind of any engineering expertise or physics expertise wants to uh, wants to do an observation check on it, I'll let you do that. Anybody uh, want to look at this thing? I'll go ahead and take a look at it. Okay. Okay, make me an observation check. Okay. You got a success. So, uh, it looks to you like this would be, uh, something that would, uh, give off a, when activated, would give a massive, uh, electronic, uh, electric pulse. Electromagnetic pulse. EMP. Yeah. It looks at least like the prototype of such a device. Huh. This looks like this is a prototype EMP bomb. It could be useful for shutting things down. Could be. Definitely. Um, Let's uh, see if we can find a detonator or something for it. Yep. Eb, uh, Eb is going to go into the power tools cabinet. Uh... He just say, found power torches, welding torches up here. Is he in the repair room? He's or in the power tool room. The power tool. Tool. Maybe we should go meet up with the rest of the guys. Maybe we can find more stuff in different rooms. Maybe not everything's in this room. Yep. That's a good idea. What's the uh, personal data transfer thing that I got? Oh, it, it will transmit your... Uh, it'll transmit your... Your uh, your location and your uh, vital signs. Okay. Assuming that we got the like the other. Oh, go ahead. What? Yeah, it'll transmit to uh, to whoever's got the uh, the monitor. Uh, you can choose who has the uh, probably whoever has a motion tracker. Yeah, I, I've got the most tracker, so I can keep track of Yeah, people. so you hook up the data so that it feeds into that. Okay, okay. Cool. Uh, so, uh, Eb's going to ask if you guys want to uh, come with him uh, to the power tool room and grab the uh, grab the tools uh, that he found. Yeah. All right. I'll come up to him. Yep. Uh... So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, yeah, three welding torches in here, each power supply five, uh, and then two reloads for a uh, bolt gun. Does anybody else have a bolt gun? Is my... Yeah, Jaden might. Is my uh, M4A3 service pistol a bolt gun? No, no, a bolt gun is the Watatsumi MV403, or, uh, yep, yeah, so, yeah. it'll say, uh, okay. give me a second, yep, so, Jaden, I don't think you do, but, or, yeah, you do, you started with, uh, you would have started with four reloads, so, uh, Eve, Eve is gonna suggest that you guys split the two, uh, reloads, so that you each have five. Sounds good. Yep, so, uh, now put five reloads beside your bolt gun. And then, uh, uh, if you dropped your cutting torch, uh, just, you can grab one here. I will do, if you do not mind. Go ahead. Thank you much. Hmm. There we go. So Ralphie goes into cold storage. Can I make an observation roll, see what's in there? 
the air is chilled so much you can uh, see your breath. Uh, the walls are thermal foil lined. The metal shells are welded to the concrete floor. Uh, it's freezing in there. But, uh, yeah, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you look in there. Okay. Uh, you find a, uh, a Samani E-Series watch. Uh, somebody must have dropped it. Uh, it'll give you survival plus one. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that thing on. Yep. Nice. Uh, it basically monitors, uh, it's a precision wristwatch. Uh, it's capable of telling the time and date. Uh, it allows space travelers to keep track of time back home while they are in deep space. Uh, it also includes oxygen and pressure sensors to warn its users of a hull breach. So, yeah, you've got a new uh, fancy watch that you can flex. Hmm. Wait, do I, I show this to John? Repair room? What? Can I check the cabinet in the repair, repair room? room? Sorry, can you say that again? The cabinets in the repair room. Oh, yeah. There are various uh, unfinished projects, but that... Uh, that one labeled under the name uh, B Blizzard is the the only one that really sticks out as anything of uh, of significance. Okay, I'm going to the spare parts room. Okay. Uh, there are several stacks of uh, metal crates. Uh, these are mostly holding like manufacturing parts. Uh, they hold nuts, bolts, and metal fittings in assorted sizes. Uh, some of the larger ones contain more some complex parts like uh, servos and PCBs. Hmm. I'll move over to tools and see what I can find in there. Yep. Uh, mostly, uh, mostly just ordinary tools, hammers, wrenches, screwdrivers, but uh, you do find a maintenance jack in there. I'll come back and grab the mate. Oh, it's, uh, let me see what the actual stats on that thing are. Uh, I don't, it, uh, oh yeah, it gives you plus one to heavy machinery. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, before you guys left, uh, just to help you out, um, Dr. Culkin gave you each, uh, two doses of nap relief. Nap relief? Yep. Uh, he warned you that taking uh, taking more than one dose in an eight-hour period is very, very, a very, very bad idea. But this <clears throat> can help focus you if you find yourself uh, if you find yourself getting uh, getting the shakes uh, or find yourself unable to function due to uh, anxiety. Okay. So functionally. Nap relief will, uh, if you take one, it'll set your stress level to zero. Cool. Yep. So, uh... I was either Jin or Ab who had really good heavy machinery. I'll call them both over and ask them if they want the jack. Abba's gonna... Let me see. I was gonna say, uh... Uh, with the... I've already got a cutting cord, so I don't really think I need it right now. Uh... Jaden, you want it? Hey, I already got one, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Not everything is gonna be, you know, something we need at the moment. Yep. You never know, having a spare one might not kill you. I guess I'll hold on to it. Yep, and uh... You wanna go Mary check Bailey out spare just... parts? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was saying to Scott, you wanna go check out spare parts? The room yeah, I'll head over there now. Across the hall? Okay. Sorry, go ahead with oh. the Mary Bailey. Yep, she goes into the office, uh... She, uh, she's 
she picks up a couple things, uh, and she comes back to you guys and says, uh, check out what I, check what I found out. She's gonna join you guys in the spare parts room. And she's gonna hold up a bunch of, uh, a couple of blueprints, uh, they align with the evacuation plan of the basement in the break room. Uh, there are several rooms that are labeled future clause 88 C use. Uh, and a little further examination reveals work orders for titanium and concrete, but many of the paragraphs are blacked out. Found this in the offices over, uh, over by the break room and primary power. Don't you, do you, I mean, remember what they, uh, what they were telling to those, uh, poor bastards they brought in? Something about eight, clause 88C of their employment agreement? That must be their project. Yeah. Yeah. Seems... The one that's gone oh so well. <laughs> yeah, those bastards got what they deserved. Actually, if you don't mind me asking, do y'all happen to actually have a full copy of the, uh, Elves work contract? Uh, I do not. Uh, as far as I know, uh, I mean, are you asking... I mean, none of you guys would, but, uh... Yeah, just curious if your office had a copy of it for... Oh, yeah, you guys can go ask, uh... You guys can go find try and find somebody to ask. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you much. Yeah, that's just me being GM. You guys can... Yeah. I want to check out the reindeer feed storage. Okay. I'm going to start looking around in the spare parts room. Yep. So, uh, yeah, in there, uh, you're just finding basic uh, construction parts. Uh, nothing that really is going to be of use to you. Because, uh, uh, and uh, Ralphie, you are going to find... I mean, it's all filled with... Uh, with, uh, you know, grain and various, you know, fodder that you'd expect from reindeer, uh, but there's a lot a lot more, uh, there's also several pieces of large animal handling equipment, uh, and make me an observation roll at minus one. Also, while that's happening, I'm gonna pull out the weird egg-shaped object that we'd found show it off to everybody in the spare parts room be like yo we found this cool EMP mine thing that is missing some parts we need to find we need to find like a button or something for it a yep. switch maybe finding uh maybe finding who made it yeah maybe find out who made it because uh it's called B Blizzard yeah, yeah that was the name just... uh you guys do recall that you met uh an elf whose first name began with a B he was the first person you met here. Oh, was that was that Barry? Buddy. Buddy. Buddy Elf. Buddy. You don't know his last name, but uh you knew his name began with a B. Was he an unusually tall elf? Oh uh, no elf features. Oh, he had elf features, but he was okay. unusually tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Ralphie made that observation check as well. Okay. You notice that uh, there seems to be a lot of feed here, a lot more than you. No, that wasn't that wasn't my new role. Oh, I'm trying to get it to work. Do I just do dash for uh, minus put, one? Yeah, just dash one. Because it didn't work last time. Hmm. I can also try and roll it for you. There we go. Okay, you succeeded. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you notice that there's a lot of feed here. More than you might expect to be storing at any one time for, you know, an actively consuming group of reindeer. So, something seems a little bit off. But there's nothing, like, useful in here, I guess? No, nothing that you can find. You just notice that there's an unusual amount of food that 
doesn't it doesn't seem right. Now, uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna give me a second. Uh, yeah, I realized that's placing some of the objects. Uh, So, let's see. I'm just going to place those there for now. <clears throat> so you guys can see the label on that run. Yep. That way you guys can be more informed about where you want to where you might want to go. Yep. Cuz you never know where you might find important clues. Sorry about uh, forgetting that. What can I repair? I, I'm I'm feeling, you know, a little more chilled out, a little comfortable now. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to the repair room and look around. Oh yeah, I mean, you guys have already looked through there a million times, uh, so. I thought you said that uh, when I don't remember who was in here by themselves, but somebody checked and said they found something about B Blizzard, and then he just left. Oh yeah. No, that was the thing with the bomb, the EMP. Oh, okay. I thought it was something else, like some no. more, like more, more stuff about it. Okay. No, uh, well, then no. never mind. That never happened. None of that just happened. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to. <laughs> I just want to clarify so that. Uh, no, you're good. I don't want to be railroady. I just want to make sure yeah, that everybody yeah. is on the same page. Yeah. You know, no, you're good. You're not. You're gonna go to primary power. Yeah, I'm gonna go to primary power and see what's in there. Okay. Uh, well, they're checking that. I'll head to secondary. So, um, right here you see a, a large, uh, reactor. It's, uh, seems to be ge probably geothermal power. Um, and, uh, you've got, uh, you can hear, uh, powerful current surging through the machines. Uh, and on the right is a wall-mounted terminal. Alright, I'm gonna go check out that terminal. See what I can find on it. Scrolling through the terminal logs, uh, you find a usage graph from three weeks ago registered to the R&D lab. As opposed to an instant drop-off, there's just a rapid decline in uh, in usage. Uh, so make me an observation roll. I'll give you a plus two. Not 20. Okay. Uh, this suggests that it, instead of a cable malfunction, it was a site-wide equipment malfunction that occurred. Uh, and you and auxiliary power in the center of a room is a diffuse generator. It's a massive glass sphere allowing for visual confirmation that it's converting extra charge from the primary power system into reusable electricity. It's surrounded by large batteries, each one displaying its charge level. So, yep, you found out something very important. It wasn't just some cable that broke. It seems that just the entire usage of just machinery in general, like everything started to malfunction all at once. Hmm. Tight wide. Specifically for R&D. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go over to the CCTV room and try to call someone over to try to figure out if we can maybe see more of what happened when okay, when things went one. wrong. Maybe somebody's used that EMP before. Uh, okay, so... That, that definitely seems like it's what it might have happened. We should go and talk to Buddy after we're done I'm looking down here. <clears throat> that might be a good I'll, idea. Let me see. I'll look at the CCTVs. Yeah, so... It appears this room is, uh, the CCTVs in here are all, uh, are actually all, uh, showing rooms in the, uh, let me move these guys in here, whoops. Sorry, oh god, they're up. giant! <laughs> oh god! Boss fight! <laughs> oh, there is gonna be a boss fight, I'll guarantee you that.
It's a mega mutant elves. Yeah, say it's so. Yeah, these guys are sitting in here. Uh... Alive or dead? Oh, they're alive. Oh. They're just kind of chilling. Tip, tip tapping away. Uh, yep, they're uh, they're like, uh, some days just so goddamn boring. I'm gonna Whoa. gently tug on one of their ears and say, "Oh, they are real." Oh fuck! What the hell, man? I'm like almost draw. I almost drew my gun, but I like ease up now. Realize that they're just elves. Like, what the hell are you doing in here? Do you not know what's going on? We're doing our job. We're here making sure that uh, nothing's going on with any of the systems. We're making sure that nothing, uh, no security breaches are occurring. Uh, I think there's a pretty bad security breach. I could be wrong, though. I don't I don't work here. Where, what, what are you talking about? Uh, maybe there's someone else that's better explained. I'm kind of Look, terrified we're right just kind of we're just low on. rank we're just the low rank in every man so if well, you want to go into the office then maybe they can help you i don't i don't think anybody was in the office uh, mary was in the office yeah mary went into the office uh she didn't tell you whether or not she saw someone oh yeah, yeah. you're right <laughs> well then do you have any cameras on the r d lab Nobody has any cameras on the R&D lab except the R&D lab. We don't get to do any... Those spooks don't tell us anything. As far as I'm concerned, we're better off without them. Stupid way, you bastards. You got anything on camera that might uh, incriminate somebody? Uh... We haven't seen anything. I mean... Look, these, these cameras... They don't cover every spot in the facility. We do. We did our best to get general coverage, but if somebody really wanted to do something sneaky, they could probably find a place. I mean, the way you roam, that's completely off limits. Might as well be part of the R&D division. Don't know why they put it in here to begin with. Can I assume that Scott told me what he found on those monitors when we were in the primary power room? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, to... I'm gonna tell the elves that uh, that uh, it wasn't that there wasn't a cable malfunction, and that it was a like a site-wide equipment malfunction for the R and D department. Yeah, well, that wasn't. Uh, the, I didn't have anything to do with it. If that's what you're implying. No, I'm not implying that. We're just we're just. Never mind. I don't I don't know if this conversation is going anywhere, Alfie. Yeah, these elves are useless. Yeah, it sounds like it. I guess I'll come down <clears throat> from power. And I'm gonna yoink one of the elves' hats and put it on my head and run off. Nice. Oh, and he... The elf is just gonna sigh and, uh... get up and go to the break room. Let's keep going, Jaden. Let's, let's look at the water treatment. I'm going to have one question for the elves in the CCTV room. Yep. Did you guys see anything weird go on three weeks ago in this facility? In this facility? No. Uh, I mean, there was kind of a... I mean, I felt that hairs on my neck stand up for a little bit, and then there was a little bit of a... kind of a, a flickering of the lights, but it was like half a second at most. Uh, those kind of things can happen here uh, when there's a severe storm. So, feel like, feel, did it feel like staticky? When the, yeah, I mean, yeah. we get electrical storms up here uh, during the winter, okay. uh, so I assume it's probably just that. Okay. Well, all right. So you're gonna go to water treatment? Yep, I'm going to water treatment. Okay. I want to check this room out. Oh, is Which there one? Even a door for this room? Which one? YW room. Oh. You want to try and get there? Do I have to uh, go through this, like... That door, door is locked. You'll notice that, uh... It's secure, like the... Like the heavy arm... Like a heavy armory room. Uh, yeah, okay. It is near... There's no control panel there, and it looks impregnable. But you do see... A small vent... That, um... Is on the floor. Uh... 
just small. It's too small for an adult to go through, but, uh... I call someone... over Ralphie. And if you want to do the water treatment thing, since he's there now. Yep. So, uh, the room is filled with water pipes leading to various pressurized tanks. Uh, in the center of the room is a slow-moving turbine tank. Uh, you see several gauges monitoring contaminants and heavy metals, and they all appear to be within uh, acceptable parameters. Hmm. Nothing weird in here. I'm going to say I went with him originally. Okay. Because there was nothing valuable, probably in the uh, alternative power unit. How's it going, Turtle? We're setting up for some scary alien shit happening soon, probably. I say, hey, Ralphie. You see this vent? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, well, I mean, from what I know, they keep the best candy and uh, hot chocolate hidden. And I'm pretty sure that this vent leads to the other side of this door that we're standing next to. How about you hop in this vent and go and try and find the uh, the way to open this door? You know, you don't gotta lie to me. I know what's going on around here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, will you help me? You know what? I just might this one time. Alright, I appreciate it. Okay, so you're going to go into the vent? Yep. Roll me a death roll. No, I'm kidding. Uh... <laughs> no, Ralphie! <laughs> what have you done? He goes in the vent and you just hear... Just a giant fan. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead. He's been liquefied. There's no identifiable remains left. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, yep. Okay, so... It's a grid of death lasers in there. Do you, are you able to see the furniture in the room now? Oh, whoops. I didn't do that right. My bad. Uh, now you should see it. Boom. Yep. Okay. So, uh... The whole room is filled with monitors, and not the good kind with scales. Each screen has live footage from uh, every room in the complex, every classroom, every kitchen, every living space. Uh, there's a table in the center of the room. There's a clipboard on it with a bunch of names. On the back of the steel wall bulkhead door, uh, it's locked tight. It's a console with two switches, both numbered. There's a sticky note above the switches le reading, Door 1 must be shut before door 2 must can be opened. All right. So, uh... Uh, also make me, uh... Make me an observation roll. Uh-oh. Okay, nothing. Never mind, you don't see anything. So I should probably try to get the door open. Yep. Uh, you see a little console right here. On the left side of the door. So it said door... Which one's door one? Which one's door two? I guess we'll find out. Um, let's try to open door one first. Okay, well, Let's see all of this... behind door number yep. one. <laughs> Boop. Bow. Bow. Yep, this actually, uh, it appears that that was related to something different, because this terminal actually releases uh, these two doors. They are now unlocked. Uh, the switch that they were talking, that appears they were talking about is uh, this one right here. Thanks, kid. Uh, do you want to make a, uh, do you want to make an observation roll? Yeah, I'll make an observation roll. Uh, here we go. Boom. Now you owe me candy, by the way. Okay. Cool. Let's 
So, uh, as you're examining the room, the room further, you feel a hot breeze from above you and an acidic, kind of burnt metal or liquidized metal smell. Mm. Looking for the source, you see a rectangular opening in the ceiling that appears to be torn. Ugh, like, and it looks like it's been, well, is that torn just open. the picture? Okay, it just looks like it's been torn. All right. Yeah, and do you also notice, look over by this chair, zoom in. Yeah, the chair in the right corner here. Yep, do you want to push yeah. it? Do you want to push it aside? <laughs> yeah, I'll push it aside. Maybe we should call for help first. Yep, so you after, see after an I even put, smaller after vent. I push, after I push it aside, then I'll I'll call. I'll be like, Scott, you might want to get in here. I'll come over, see if the doors are open, see Ralphie and come down. Yep, so... I uh, call for John to come over. Tell him there could be trouble. Yep. Okay. So, John, do you, do you, uh, do you listen to him? Yeah, I'm not finding anything in the water treatment plant. I'll just, uh, come on over. Okay, so, yeah, you notice this very small vent, uh, none of you would be able to fit through it, but, uh, it appears that it's been, uh, like, there are scratch marks on the floor around it, uh, and the vent itself is mostly torn open. Alright, I knew, I know I just sent you down a vent, Ralph, but I don't know if I feel comfortable sending you down this one. Yep. No amount but, of candy on earth will get me in that hole. I'll fall <laughs> out. Yep. I'm gonna take a look at it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you notice that uh, it looks like something came out of this vent. Something with claws. Oh gosh. I wonder. I wonder if those things they can get out from here. You presume, based on size, those large ones would have no hope of squeezing themselves through here. Hmm. What about the vent from the... Well, I guess they can get into this room, but they can't get out. Well, you see a vent in the ceiling that also has been torn into. That's the first. Okay, that's so the thing I you <laughs> Okay, so I point after after that. I just point up to the ceiling. Ah, and I point to the and you guys notice that yeah. the uh, yeah that one looks like it was torn into from the from the side uh, of this room. The other one looks like it was torn into from below. Okay. Wonder where that one leads. Yeah, it seems like it must be connected to the other facility. Might want to warn them that they're not safe upstairs. Let's try to find something real quick. Uh... Don't mind. I'd like to take a look at that list of names on that table. Okay, give me a second. Uh... Take your time. Yep. It has uh, a couple of names. Uh... None that, uh, none that you are familiar with. Uh, if you had, um, if you had looked at some of the offices upstairs, you might have, uh, you might have gotten some of these names, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, these names are all, uh, they're definitely elf names. They scream festive out the wazoo. All right. Is there anything else? Uh, is there anything um, to script okay. this list? Does it give away anything to its own purpose? Uh, it seems to be part of, uh, part of methodology for a, uh, for some sort of project. Uh, Does it say the name of the project? Uh, it references Project Something Runner. 
something Runa. Oh, uh, you can't make out the rest. Runner. The rest of these guys are going to come join you. Uh, they, uh, they're going to tell you, uh, they found, uh, they found something in, uh, in heating, uh, they say, uh, there was a, something in heating, there was a graph, staggered graph, says in-house repair, and, uh, one of the technicians told us, uh, oh, it, what it, whatever that means, it means Wayland, only Wayland Utani engineers are allowed to respond to it, uh, and L contractors are not, so that would explain why nobody was able to get in there for three weeks, because none of them are way you. But, uh, Let me ask yeah. it. How hot do those things get? My character what asked. Things? How big do what things get? How hot do those uh, heating vents get? Uh, oh, the heating vents would get to, uh, you know, hundreds of degrees. But uh, that isn't the, the, the... A lot of the ventilation here is for circulation. That's kind of the wrong term. Just you mean the pipes? Itself, then, maybe. Yeah, the, the regular pipes, uh, or, or the ventilation, like the stuff you're seeing here, would not be exceptionally hot or cold. It's just there for, uh, to help air circulate. Well, I was meaning specifically the, uh, uh heating unit that, sh uh, you were, sp uh, your lead character you were speaking as was speaking about a moment ago. That Waylon Utani. Oh, that was, uh, the heating in, uh, that was heating in the, uh, in the, uh, in the R&D division. It it flatlined uh, at least the upper part of R and D uh, flatlined heating three weeks ago. Explain that power outage, menu, uh, what's the term? Equipment failure. Yep. More evidence of that. So uh, yeah, this is the uh, this is the terminal where the sticky note was. I'll go take a look at that. Yep, so, uh... I have a very bad feeling about that door. So far. Do you think we should open it? Do you think we've got enough and we should go back upstairs and tell Mr. Kringle that we got his bomb? And part of his EMP. Yeah, maybe not the best idea, but... I mean, it looks like that door's pretty reinforced for a reason. Like, yeah. whatever's in there should stay in there right now. Yeah. Maybe we go and ask him what's in this room. Okay. Do you guys want to go up to the where they were? Uh, we never yeah, looked at ahead. any cameras. Is there anything we could try to find out? Um, all these cameras are again in uh, showing this division. Uh, showing just elf housing. You're just seeing, uh, you know, like the atrium. You're seeing the park. Uh, you're seeing the kitchen. You're seeing the common rooms. People are watching. Uh, people are watching a movie. Uh, there's a pool. There's the one in the pool room upstairs in the botanical garden. There's one in the psychiatrist's office uh, where you see a, uh, a rather tall, well-muscled man. Uh, you see the name Dr. Uh, Harold Langston. Uh and it looks like uh, looks like Christopher Kringle and his wife have left the building. Uh, you don't see them anywhere on the cameras. Uh, they may have returned to their own home. Uh, but uh, you could always go see uh, Dr. Culkin. I feel like we should ask Buddy at least about his... Possibly his little creation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you see him in the uh, in the gymnasium. Is Let's that where you want to go? Buddy. Yeah. Okay. Now we're on floor two. The gym is bottom right. Bottom right. Okay. So yeah, feel free to move your. And, uh... <clears throat> yep, 
you see him, uh, you know, stretching on a, uh, on one of these, uh, just kind of working out his muscles. Oh, hey! How's it going? Haven't seen you guys since that, uh, that first night. Yeah, it's been pretty fucking crazy. What do you mean? Well, certainly a problem in R&D. Yeah. Why don't you get off that ho-ho-ho flex and talk to us like a man? Okay. He doesn't seem to get what you're applying, but uh, (laughs) he comes up. As in a bow flex gym equipment machine. Oh, I get it. He just doesn't get it. Okay. Say, buddy, what's what? What happens to be your last name? I know it's a weird question, but I just gotta ask. Lizard, it. lizard, why? I think we might have found one of your toys. Do you take it out? Do you take yeah, it out for pull, him? I, yeah, I pull it out as I say that. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, that's actually uh, that was an old uh, prototype. Um, I was working on trying to make one of those uh, handheld back massagers a while ago, but I could never seem to get it right. The back massager? Yeah. I always wanted one because, you know, after a workout, uh, you know, it can really, you just want to lay down and it'd be right, really nice right, to just right. have one of those handheld things to just relieve that tension in the back. Understandable. Can, understandable. can I okay, roll buddy. to kick him in the balls? <laughs> uh, roll me close combat. Would it be within my character to try and interrupt him and then, you know, get him to not do that? Yeah, yep. Uh, what should I'll I say? Oh, well, he missed, so. <laughs> miss. Uh, Tell you what, buddy. Buddy's gonna kind of, uh, you basically kind of, you kick up, but you trip and fall and, and fall flat on your butt. And, uh, Buddy's gonna, uh, be like, oh, you okay? And he's going to offer you a hand. I'm going to slap his hand away. And I'm get say, get up oh, and I'm say, sorry. shut I'm up. Sorry. I'm going to say, sorry. buddy. Buddy. It seems to me that this might be a little bit more than a back massager. Yeah, there's a reason I gave up on that project. Uh, it just was... It was always just causing... It was, it was always giving us problems. Uh, just Like messing static. with the electronics and stuff? Yeah. It was always giving off shocks, uh, but... I don't know. Uh, uh, that's why I gave up on it. That's why it was an abandoned project. Well, I think we can maybe turn it into something, then. Hmm. Not a bad idea. I think we might be able to turn it into an EMP. Hmm. I can see, uh, I can see the, the usage of that. Would you want to maybe pick this project back up and turn it into something for us? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay, and I hand him the bee blizzard. Yep. He's gonna take it and, uh, he's gonna head out of the gym. And boom. Hey, it was trying to make a back massager. You really think he didn't know what that was? Well, I mean, he is an elf. Maybe he didn't. But (laughs) maybe, just maybe he did. I think I misinterpreted what we were doing with Buddy there. Because I thought we were grilling him because he used that as an EMP. That's why I tried to kick him in the balls. (laughs) <laughs> that's what I think he did <laughs> well yeah. once Buddy gets back with the thing I'll ask him what he did with his original prototype or if Waylon wanted it because I wouldn't put it past Waylon Utani to want something yeah. like that you have a feeling he's not going to be back for a while okay. back massage or EMP it'll help us Just remember that uh, depending on how the power goes out, uh, you could end up making things way, 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 way worse. Yeah, that's honestly what I've been thinking this entire time because we're 
using a remote detonation device to blow up the fucking bomb. And if an EMP goes off at any time after we have the bomb set up, we're fucked. <laughs> or worse, remember that the uh, the power is still on keeping that uh, that door at B door at level closed. B one shut. Yep. What if the power went off there? That door would open. I'm not stopping you guys from doing it, but I yell, "Be careful!" as <laughs> Blizzard's walking out the door. <laughs> oh yeah, don't worry about me. Oh, fuck. We're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in case he messes that thing up, any of you guys know how to turn an EMP into a Tesla coil? That may be a little bit more viable. Let's just... Let's just, oh, I know how, let's just get I this bomb set and home. maybe we don't even have to worry yep. about it. So, yeah, that uh, sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Yep. So... You guys want to uh, you guys want to go back to the basement to the way you room, or do you want to try and uh, go the traditional way? Uh, why don't we keep exploring up here? Because we didn't fully look around up here. Sure. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna remember that man screaming about the cookie. Put that cookie down. That's, yep, that's... coming from the. Uh, it was coming from the psychologist room when yep. he heard you uh, talking about chocolate milk. Wow, okay, I'm drawing a whole bunch and I don't know how to stop. Oh, I think I can, uh... Yeah, I got, no, it. I got it, I got it. I there figured it out. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we're going to the offices. The... Psychologist? Yep. Go over and see what's going on over here. Did you guys knock on his door or you just barge into his office? We just barge in. No, I don't know. <laughs> Make sure to unlatch the door first before you just kick it in. Uh, I, I guess I'll knock before I go in. Yeah, you probably got it, dude. <clears throat> Well, is anyone in the psychiatrist's office? Did we lose him? No. Mm -hmm. Reptile lover. <laughs> So apparently for a short instance, the door decides to just be a stasis field and completely <laughs> the internet got messed up. But the door is completely stuck in place as you attempt to kick it open. The moment when your tabletop game crashes. <laughs> Keep jiggling and jiggling the door. <laughs> Just keep knocking. Hey, I got that cut. Oh, you're in there. Do you think that stuff works on wood? Well, I, I mean, it lighted on fire, and we probably shouldn't be that mean. Nah, you got a point. Oh. Back. You're back. Yeah, sorry. My internet got... I don't know what happened. Anyway. Right. You're good. Okay. So, you guys moved to uh, the psychologist room? Yes. Yeah. Yep, and he and knocks on the door. Can we figure door. out that... Hello! Uh, who's there? Oh, who's yeah. there? Come in! Come in! I'm here! I, I guess we'll filter in. Yep. Here you meet uh, Dr. Howard Langston. He introduces himself. He says, John Kane, you son of a bitch! <laughs> and he shakes your hand, and you can feel the muscles, uh, you know... Do we do the arm the arm wrestle clasp? Hell yep, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Roll uh roll strength. <laughs> Let's where am I? Uh strength. Wait, how do I roll 
a strength thing. Just roll five or however many d6 you have for strength. I guess I can roll close combat. It's the same thing. It's just going to be my strength attribute. Yeah, if you have zero in close combat, that's what I would... Okay. He's like, <laughs> damn, you, you've been working out. And he, yeah, shakes his, uh, he shakes his arm a little bit. And I'm going to stop trying to do that accent because I'm really bad at it. So What's well, the you... point of that accent? I don't know. Because uh, he's he's Howard Langston. Look closely at the look closely at the token. Is that the dad from uh, Jingle All the Way? Yeah, Jingle All the Way. Safely yeah. under our tree. Yep, that's yep. Such a good movie. Yep. But, can uh, I assume that I know this guy? Then I can be like, "What the hell are you doing?" All yeah, the way? you. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, you actually uh, served under him. He was known, uh, or at least for a, a very short time, you served under him. Uh, he was known very well amongst his men for basically, uh, you knew him for being unusually kind and open-minded, especially for a CEO. Uh, and he was always there to, uh, to support his men both on and off the battlefield, uh, for both physical, physical and psychological distresses. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, I see you, uh, you left the, uh, you left the Marine Corps too. Get tired of all the killing. Yeah. I was trying to make a quick buck and retire, but it hasn't gone so well so far. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that. I uh, I got a degree in psychiatry uh, or psychology, uh, and uh, Chris Kringle uh, invited me here to uh, to serve as his chief psychologist to ensure all of the elves are uh, mentally sound. Uh, we haven't had uh, we haven't had any issues so far, but you never know. Well, listen, we've seen a lot of the elves get caught up in this Wayland yutani project, and uh, it's a whole, it's a mess down there. Oh, I always, I've always hated those corporations and being under their thumb. It was only a matter of time before they did something horrible. Have you noticed any of any of uh, the elves around here missing? Anything? Oh uh, yeah, there. Yeah, for the past three weeks or so. Uh, there have been just, I'd say maybe two dozen, uh, two two dozen elves have gone missing. Uh, but nobody seems to know why or where they've gone. It's uh, uh, deeply concerning. Yeah, you should be concerned. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they're they're not gonna make it, but we're we're trying to put a stop to it. That's good to hear. If there's anything I can do to help you, uh. Then please let me know. I will. Uh, I will do my best to assist you. Though my duties are here, I, I have heard of, uh, heard a little bit about your mission. I cannot necessarily come with you, but I can at least offer my support. Well, we sure would miss you on the battlefield. You know, I mean, you don't have a minigun hiding around here, do you? Not exactly. He is. Uh, he does uh he does move over to uh one of these bookshelves and uh moves it aside a little bit and uh he's got there a uh an m forty one a pulse rifle with uh with his name actually uh etched into the uh into the case and a couple of uh couple of uh, honor medals uh, kind of tacked onto it. Uh, this thing saw me through two decades of war. I've never used it since, but if it will help you, then yeah, you know what? If, you're free to borrow it. It might help us, might help somebody who doesn't have, you know, I'm obviously armed, but maybe one of our other guys Anybody want to take it? Ralphie? I'll take it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll yeah. take it. I was okay. about to suggest Ralphie, because he's probably got a higher range combat than I do. Uh, let's see. What, what is your range combat, Ralphie? It would be his agility score, or, yeah, it would just be 
he would actually have not. He wouldn't be too I bad. My agility's that. five, actually. I have zero range <laughs> he combat. He literally though. has a higher range combat than Jaden. Take it, Ralphie. <laughs> but be careful. Don't okay. shoot your eye out. Yeah, don't, don't shoot, shoot your, your eye out. out. Oh come on, guys! I think I can handle a gun. Yep. Okay, so I'm almost I'm ten. You... Damn it. Yep. So you're gonna grab it, and it's gonna feel. You can feel the weight of this damn thing. It's, it's heavy. It's, like, for for reference, it's a quarter of your total carrying capacity. Because your total carrying capacity is twice your strength, which is four. So, I'll give you the stats. Bonus, plus one. Damage, two. Range, long. Armor, piercing. Full auto. I'm afraid I don't have any, uh, I didn't keep any grenades for souvenirs, but, uh, hopefully the, uh, the three spare magazines, uh, will be enough. So, it has, uh, you have three reloads. Can you do the stats for it one more time? Yep, uh, bonus is plus one. Damage is two. Long range. And then the special rules are armor piercing and full auto. All right, gotcha. Great. Now let me just make sure that you, uh, let me see what you've got in your inventory right now. Okay, uh... Yeah, you... Yeah, you're gonna need to put that in your, uh... Yep, so, uh... Yeah, you're basically... You're barely gonna care... If, if any... Nobody have Ralphie carry anything else, because he's practically at his limit. Just so you all know. Well, I hope that helps, and I wish you the best of luck. Alright, well... Yeah, he'll also, uh, give you guys a little bit of a deep breathing technique that, uh, helped him during combat, uh, so that even if you're in a slightly uh, unsafe location, if you're able to sit still and breathe for, say, five in-game minutes, you'll be able to lower your stress level by one. So now that's a special ability you guys will have. And I'm only giving it to you because you're going to need it. <laughs> I say that as a GM. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, before we go, have you ever seen an elf named Buddy Blizzard in... Oh, I've seen everybody here. Uh, Buddy Blizzard is, uh, seems like a good guy. Uh, he's, uh, nothing, nothing I can say too much about him. He doesn't come in here often. Ah, uh, I got that impression from him. Seems like a very cheerful guy. Yeah, he's, uh, definitely very business-oriented. Uh, very corporate. Which... Which Always struck me as weird, but uh, in today's world, huh. it pays to be corporate. So, uh, that's interesting. Interesting indeed. Probably fucked up giving him that. I'm not saying this in character, I'm just saying this out loud, but we probably fucked up giving him that fucking EMP. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Only time will tell. Yep. Now, yeah, worst uh, comes to worst, we tell him to keep it. Yep. Oh, yeah. That, that this, might be the problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good point. Yep. And I'm just, and just so you know, even though I haven't dragged them on here, Eb and Bloody Mary are with you. They're just not saying anything because. I'm not going to take over. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so. <clears throat> All right, well, do we keep looking around up here? Is there anything anywhere else we need to go look? 
Hmm. We saw that list of names down there in that uh, WI room. Anyway, uh, y'all think we should check out the offices, see who uh, was on that list? You're absolutely good. Maybe the yes. psychologist might know some of the names? Maybe they could tell us something? Actually, you wanna, yeah. You wanna, give sure. him, wanna pass him the list? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know a few of these folks. Uh, they've... They've come in before. Uh, they seem perfectly like, uh, like good people. Uh... Can't say much beyond that. Uh... Odd that, uh, Wayland would... That the R&D would want anything to do with them. Have they been around recently? Um... Yeah, yeah, the... I believe, uh... Perky Sweets, uh... Animal Husbandry and Training over, uh... His office is over by the gym. Perky Sweets. Yep. Hmm. Elves have Weird. different naming conventions from the rest of us. So they're not the ones that have gone missing yet. Uh, that's that's the question were... about Perky. Is he yep. a little bigger than the rest of the elves? Nope. Typical size. Huh. Interesting. Are there, are there any elves on this list that seem to be a little bit larger than the rest of them? Uh, no, no. Most elves are within, aside from uh, Buddy, who's a little bit tall, but uh, he's still within standard elf range of heights. Uh, none of the elves uh, on this list appear kind of physically deviant. Well, thanks for the information. I guess we should go meet this perky sweets. Yep. So. Which up this is? He said over by the gym. Lead the way. Ah. Ah, it's, it's, it's over here. Well, yeah. let's go see if you know. Yep. Anything. And as you go around the corner, you note, uh, you'll see a couple names. Let me uh, put these on the map. This is Choi Naughty Piercer, Flippy Evergreen, Tinsel Twinkle Spools. Nice. I like these names. Yep. Uh, thank uh, Protector of Cam for that. Hell yeah. The guy's fucking brilliant. Yeah, he is. Naughty Piercer. Yep. So, uh, you guys, uh, you guys want to knock on the door? Let's knock yes. on the door. Come in! Come in! Yep, so, uh, you see, uh, ordinary, uh, looking male, uh, male elf. Uh. My name is Perky Sweets. I'm responsible for, uh, the animal husbandry and training around here, uh, you know, with the reindeer. Uh, I'm guessing you all are from the, uh, from that rescue ship, uh, Checking out the R and D. Yep, and we did notice uh, Wayland Utani uh, had you on a list of sorts, and uh, we're wondering if they ever contacted you and uh, tried to get you to participate in any experiment or or study. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There was uh, it was a couple of months ago. Uh, they took me in, and uh, it was just some sort of uh, medical examination. Uh, you know, they took a few, uh, took a few test tubes of blood, uh, looked at my heart and blood pressure, and then, uh, after about an hour, they sent me back. Did they, uh, did they do that to any of the other co-workers around here? Uh, they've done it to a few, uh, I believe, uh, what's her name downstairs, uh, there have been, uh, a bunch of them, uh, Trying to grab all my notes, the names. Uh, Coco Pom Pom, Food and Welfare. Uh, she was, on the, she was the one. Just uh, she actually was in just ahead of me, but uh, 
Most of the ones they've taken are uh, are the ones that just uh, kind of standard factory workers. Uh, they've only taken a few of us office folk. They never mentioned anything about uh, some kind of part of your contract. I don't uh, know, code 88 or something. I don't recall anything of that sort, but um, my memory is a little bit hazy. Uh, it was a couple of months ago, and uh, I did drink a lot of eggnog that day, if you know what I'm saying. Hmm. Uh, Ralphie, didn't you say something about all the reindeer feed down, down in the basement? Uh, there was an awful lot of it. Seemed kind of weird, huh? I mean, you're the animal husbandry in training. Yeah, I mean, uh, the reindeer, How many reindeer uh, do you have here? Uh, we have nine. You know. The classic nine. Obviously. Just, Sorry, go ahead. We're just saying, that's... From what we've seen, you seem to have a lot more feed than what nine reindeer would really require. I was curious if you could shed some light on that. Oh, uh, well, the reindeer have been uh, eating a little less than they usually do. Uh, I think they're just uh, kind of, now that it's winter time, they're, uh, they're kind of fasting a little bit. But uh, I'll tell you, that Rudolph, uh, oh man, he makes it so much easier to deal with the rest of them. Because that nose is just like a spotlight. <laughs> he kind of laughs a little bit. But they're great animals. So you're saying they just eat a shit ton? Uh, they they usually do. But uh, yeah, part of the reason there's so much more in storage is because they, uh, they usually eat more than they have been. Oh, you're saying that they haven't been eating very much lately. Okay. Yeah, I think what it's are just they... a winter thing. You don't think they're sick or anything? No, they've not shown any signs of uh, any signs of sickness that we would expect, like respiratory infection or gastrointestinal distress. Uh, uh, but I've kept an eye out. I've been very diligent in uh, monitoring the health of our animals, and they seem to be doing just fine. Has anybody asked to study your reindeer? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the uh, Whalen Corp, one of the first things they did was uh, was ask us about uh, using our reindeer for study purposes, and uh, they've taken them in, uh, but it seems like with us, uh, just like with us, they gave uh, just standard medical checks, and uh, they came back uh, no worse for wear. Hmm. Interesting. Why would they be eating less? Uh, just possibly appetite variants. They may have been, uh, eating less, uh, because it's winter and, uh, they ate a lot during the fall. Just a lot of mammals go through that sort of fasting period during the winter. Hey, don't mean to be any sort of... Yeah, I'll cut to the point. You may want to stick Prancer on a, uh, X-ray machine. Call it a hunch. Very well. Uh, I will consider that. Uh, I will definitely do that. Uh, maybe next uh, next morning. Uh, but uh, thank you for letting me know. I will. Uh, I will actually put that in my. Uh, I'll put my that in my to-do list. And you actually see him uh, grab onto his computer and he goes to tomorrow's date. And you actually watch as he types it in. So Thanks, he's clear. Yeah, he's clearly being genuine. Oh, cool. Anyone else we should talk to? It doesn't seem like guys around here have too much information. No. Yep. Basic As information a... at the best. Yep. As a GM, I'm going to suggest you go back to the Wayland Yutani room. I'm only saying this to save us time. I suggest we go back to the Wayland Yutani room. 
<laughs> yeah, that's not yeah. a fun enough I idea. Yeah, that's fine. YW room, let's go. Yep. Or WY, I had it backwards. Yep, so, uh... Dyslexia. D is for Lysdexia. <laughs> yep, so, uh... Eb is just gonna be like... He's gonna, uh, press the first switch. I only know one dyslexia joke and I can't say it on Twitch. Boom. Oh, wait. Should we close the door behind us if we're gonna go in? It seems that, uh... Oh, sorry, I forgot to put one thing here. Fish Pretty feet. sure one door has to be shut for the other to open. I was meaning yep. the door to the Christmas facilities. Oh, yeah. Yep, so... Oh, the outer door? This yeah. one here? Yes. Might be a good idea. While they're opening that door, I'd very much like to uh, ready my bolt gun. Okay. Yep, so you have that out. Uh, do you guys want to go this way? I'll ready yeah. my gun as well. My service pistol. Okay, so. Alright. I'm gonna head over and I'll close the doors behind us. Great. Yeah, I guess I better unsling my gun now because probably a bit more awkward for me to do that in the heat of things. Oh my god. I can just imagine this fucking nine-year-old kid carrying that gun. Yeah, because keep in mind, it's basically the size of a, you know, a Tommy gun. Yeah. So. Tommy guns are actually kind of small. They're just heavy. Yep. As you, uh, as you guys go in, uh, because, uh, Mary has her, uh, her smart gun out. Eb is going to uh, stay behind, is going to stick with the pilot because he knows you're nervous. Yeah. Now, Thanks, is everybody Eb. going in the hall? Uh, before we go in, let me check to see if there's any movement from beyond the door. Uh, there is not. The yeah, there is not. Alright, it should be safe. Doesn't look like there's anything just beyond the door. So, everybody goes in. Yep. Let's do it. Okay, give me just a second. So, boom. Everybody's gone in. That door boom, closes behind you. And... You guys all put yourselves in this region right here. Accidentally forgot to <clears throat> token layer, and then okay. So this door opens. Huh. You're you realize that you are in the second security room of the R and D lab, the same floor that uh, you got ambushed on last time, but. It's what I thought would be this behind is the, this door. This security room, it appears, has been uh, unlocked, and you see four cases, brief, basically like large briefcase-like things here. Each of them is labeled UA-571C, Automated Sentry Turret. We each, got four fucking turrets! Each is very heavy, but it is, they are all portable. The box contains instructions on how to set up the turret, which will automatically target any moving target in its line of fire. They can also be used manually and remotely if the user has a head-mounted sight. Each turret contains 500 rounds. In automatic mode, this is for mechanic purposes, the turret counts as having ballistic skill 8. To set up a turret takes two rounds. So, do you guys want to grab these? Yeah. How much, well, heck uh, yeah. How much okay. can we carry? Uh, your encumbrance value is uh, is twice your strength. So, okay. 
if you have an extra three, then you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to carry one. I can guarantee you, Ralphie can't. <laughs> no. uh, if I did I the math I... right, I'll take one. Okay. How much these so, weigh? Uh, three. Three. I don't know what my. Hey, if you don't mind three. looking my uh, equipment over and telling me if I got my encumbrance number right. Let me see. Uh, cutting Cutting torch. torch. Yep. Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay. It's just it was set to 10 when I first got the character, so I wanted to make sure. Yep. Yep. So you can carry one. Uh, Eb Eb can carry one. So I'm going to delete two of them. Yep. Uh, I would say John Kane could probably carry one. Let's see. Yep, and then uh, Lucy, you could probably carry one. Yep. I'll so one. each of you just enter sentry turret. Uh, each of you who's carrying one, just enter sentry turret on your inventory. Okay. And then you'll be able to. Uh, and then when you want to set them up, let me know, uh, and I will. And you can designate their facing and their. Uh, you know, and everything, but it will take right. two rounds to set them up. Okay. So, uh, where do you guys want to go? There's this room here, there's this room here. Uh. Let's go through this room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In here, you are going to find, uh, two wide tables. Most things have been taken, but there are two reloads for a service pistol. Uh, one reload for a pulse rifle. I'm taking I'll the pulse the... rifle reload. And a head-mounted sight. I'll take the pistol reloads. Okay. Uh, and I'll take the sight. Okay. I'll just put it on. Okay, is that everybody got everything? Is that a med kit there in the top left? Yes, it is. I'd say someone should probably get that. Yep, that'd be a smart idea. I'll go ahead and grab the med kit. Okay. So, there's nowhere right. else to go, but... Uh, but up, right? Yep. Move, uh... Like you guys want to move in, Move yourselves, uh... Into the shadow? Yeah. Would, if I may say something. What? If, uh... Can we get someone to close that, uh... Armored door before anyone goes in? Oh, this one? Yeah. It closed behind you. Oh, it did? Very good, very Whoops. good. Because otherwise yep. we just kind of doom that other facility to a straight line of xenomorphs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I say so, that, uh, I don't know if my character would know that. Oh, uh, you would probably get... You You have an idea of that. Well, I was meaning the name. Yep. But I get you. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Can I move to? Uh, <laughs> Mary Bailey is going to take lead if you guys, if none of you guys are going to. Yeah. Go ahead, Mary. Mary, Mary. Before you go in, let me look at the tracker. Okay. Uh, you see little bits of movement, but nothing big. Let me... Uh... Someone's drawn... Is that... It's a dick in blood. Oh, no. I'm just going to uh, go right behind her. Uh, uh, we we do have company on this level, so be ready. And there is supposed to be a wall right about there, right? Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, let me reveal that real quick. Yep. Mary is going to go... God, gross. Fuck. As you guys see, this floor 
that used to be metallic when you were last here is now just drenched in this black organic resin. And at the very end of the tunnel, you guys see a uh, a small, almost albino-looking alien uh, that uh, is. It's similar to the aliens. It's smaller, pale white. It seems to be tending to the walls with a long, proboscis-like structure dangling from its mouth and. Uh, Dribbling some sort of uh, substance onto the walls. Yummy. Uh, I'm gonna need you guys to make me a mobility check. All this. Uh, whoever has the lowest mobility. I got five total. I got one. Okay, make me a roll. I have zero. <laughs> well, total. You can't have zero. Total. Oh, I, I, what? What is it? Agility uh, plus. Yeah. Okay, then I got five. Uh, mine's four. Okay, what did you did you get a success or? I got a success. Okay. It doesn't notice you. But uh, Mary Bailey is gonna say, "Suck on this, you Zeno son of a bitch," and she is going to open fire. Let's see, that's uh, medium range. So. Sorry, I'm just check, double checking the range penalty. Okay. Let's see. Three successes. She's going to put all of those into damage. And, uh, this worker is it's dead. You see nice. the blood pool on the organic, uh, looking floor, but it doesn't melt through. It just, uh, it shrieks as it dies. Let's, uh, let's take a closer look. Anymore? She's gonna shout as a challenge, and she's gonna enter the hallway and look both ways. <laughs> well, which way do you guys want to go? Which way only knows to the reactor? Well. You know that uh, there's a stairwell and escalators that, or elevator that can take you there. How fresh is the trail of blood? Uh, it's old. It was there when you were last here. Okay. Let's set up. All right. Which direction to the escalator and, or the elevator or stairs? Well, we know the stairs. The elevator was this way, and the stairs were up here. Yeah, stairs were north, if I remember rightly. Yeah. If you guys want to take the ele the, the stairs or the elevator? Let's if try the stairs. That's where them. they were coming from. Stairs is probably a better principal position. Okay. So, uh, you guys moving up this way? 
Should we put a turret behind us the other way? For yeah. our escape route in case. That sounds like a good idea. Will it be a pain in the ass to deactivate the turret when we're running back through? It takes two rounds to deactivate, and uh, it won't... Because you guys don't have IFF transponders, it won't differentiate you from... Exactly. That's from the enemy. To deactivate it. It's going to be facing the other way. If we run past it, it's going to shoot us. Well, no. no. I think he, John means if we're facing it south so that nothing can sneak up behind us, that we can have an eye if we want to come back. Uh, yes. So, uh, you know what? Just to help you out, uh, Scott, why don't you make me an observation check? Okay, so I'm going to give you a little tidbit of knowledge. You figure, based on the fact that the hive has extended from this way since you got since you last were here, that uh, the hive is basically vertically oriented with the vast majority of whatever it is uh, being further down. So if anything, they're more likely to attack you from from below coming up rather than the other way around. Okay. Uh, just in case, that might uh, that might help you guys figure out a plan. All right. Let's keep going. Then. Well, it seems like all of them should be below us, and that they're expanding upwards. I'm peeking around. Hmm. Okay. So this leads you down. And uh, go ahead to. That's right. Yep. Who wants to move forward? All right, I'll go around the corner. Okay. Go ahead. A little further. Oh, okay, and then. Boom. All right. Onward. So once you move to here, that's going to take you to the next level. All right, okay. all behind us. Okay, give it a second. Okay, place your uh, place your characters uh, right here. As you went down the stairs, you noticed that the resin light coating is just completely taking over. You're really getting into the depths. You just have kind of entered the beginning of the true, the, the hive proper, as you might call it. Guys, I don't like this. I'm just a fucking pilot. Look, smells we gotta funny do our down here. Job, and let's see if we can kill some of those bastards along the way. Now, uh, everybody make me, uh, or whoever's got lowest mobility, make me a check. I think that's me again. It's, I should only have four. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. Okay. Go ahead and move. Move to where, uh, wherever you want, roughly within a zone. Yep. 
Now, what's this reactor look like that we're trying to blow up? Uh, all you know is that it is on the very bottom. <clears throat> very bottom floor. Do we want to just we get... try and get down to the bottom as fast as possible, or do we want to look around? Is there something that we need? I guess we maybe try and find Kane, but... Yeah, uh, if you remember correctly, uh, Chris Kringle uh, told you to try and find as as much incriminating evidence as you might as you possibly can uh yeah. as there is going to be uh as he wants to pin way you to the wall okay and if you annihilate everything then they have uh they can say that there was no wrongdoing on their part it's their word versus yours true okay you guys want to try and find some offices maybe try and find some logs or something yeah, you'll note well, that uh, this does seem to be, from what little organic, uh, from what little artificial thing you can see, it looks like a lot of the uh, a lot of the testing uh, type labs uh, that would have a lot of useful oh, information. Uh, a lot of the research was occurring on this floor. Oh. Uh, you could see a few signs that are uh, pointing this way. Well, oh, uh, thank for the final user. Say, uh, cold storage and cast research that startled me down here you see disposal and then uh heading this way you see uh custodial uh helmet testing chemical research uh that are kind of heading this way yeah hardly i just stream uh been streaming this alien RPG that Should reptile lover has been running. Eb asks. I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. Well, then we should probably make a decision. Because <laughs> standing still. It's not a great idea. Yeah, let's just go. Check wherever this is. Find what we need. Get out. Okay, you're going to look in that room? Yes. That is, uh... Yeah, thanks for hopping in. Hopefully you'll find this entertaining. Got Robo in here with me tonight. Filling in I'll for hang somebody. i back outside the door for a sec just to keep an eye on things. There is a lot of, uh, of notes in here. If you want to pick any of them up and look at them. I'll go ahead and take a look at the notes. Yep, I'm going to start going all, through. Uh... I'm going to start going through them, too. Yeah, so this appears to be one of three observation rooms. Uh, they are all, you'll note that there is a, uh, there is one-way glass peering into this room here. And you can see a whole bunch of, like, resinous pillars that are connecting the floor to the ceiling uh, of this room. It's been completely kind of hived up. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And so what you find here are uh, notes saying, uh, primary factor in dictating the uh, final anatomy of uh, Xenomorph XX121 appears to be the gait of the host organism, bipedal or quadrupedal, as uh, runner, lion, xenomorphs only spawn from quadruped hosts, as drones only spawn from bipedal hosts. However, comparing the aberrant human strain referred to as Christmas elves to regular homo sapiens, differences in the resulting xenomorph strains can be seen. Elf xenomorphs stay smaller than their regular brethren, being slightly weaker as a result. Uh, Reindeer spawned uh, xenomorphs also differ from accounts of the single scout encountered in Fiorina 161 with antler-like projections from their head domes. Further research using a greater diversity of hosts is needed to determine the extent of the DNA reflex. What happens if a host has six limbs? The notes also seem to indicate that ovomorphs will not use anything smaller than 3.6 to 4.5 kilograms as a host, likely due to the decreasing strength due to smaller size. However, the maximum host size has yet to be considered. Is there even a maximum host size, or is that dictated by the maximum possible size of an organism? They note that this deserves further attention and research. So that means these Wayland bastards were making these things. Seems like it. Seems pretty incriminating to me. Oh, yep. it definitely is. Somebody want to hold on to these notes? I'll hold on to them. Yeah, and they won't—they won't, they won't uh, cost you weight. Okay, I'll just 
I'll fold them up and like put them in one of my pockets or a pouch or something that I've got on my outfit. There's another room beyond that. You might find some more. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going. This again seems to be a secondary uh, testing lab. Uh, it appears to have notes on uh, what is what it referred to as uh, royal jelly. Uh, and that exposure seems to uh, seems to have a significant effect on xenomorph development. Uh, you'll note you seem to see that uh, notes on uh, there are more notes likely in uh, the primary observation chamber, which, for what you can tell, is probably uh, up here. All right, okay. let's go to the primary observation chamber. Yeah. Uh, If I may ask, does the remote sentry have a cone of fire? What? Or is it 360? Uh, it is, uh, you face it one way and then it will fire down that corridor. Okay. Yep, so, um, yep, so, you guys find uh, a whole bunch of behavioral notes in here. You find documentation on, uh, Basically, the life cycle of the xenomorph. It uh, specifically refers to uh, chest bursters, or uh, as they call them, Bambi bursters, freshly born, are not prone to aggression unless cornered, and will immediately seek out a dark, isolated place to consume metals and molt into their adult form. They will also, if opportunity arises, uh, consume the flesh of their deceased hosts in order to uh, obtain additional organic matter to reach adult size. Drones, on the other hand, being the uh, stage the bipedal evolved stage from the uh, bipedal host are, are uh, cautious. They use darkness to their advantage to sneak up on an unsuspecting prey before pouncing. They are unlikely to confront armed prey uh, head-on, preferring instead to wait until their prey is unaware or luring their prey into an ambush. Uh, scouts, on the other hand, are far more aggressive. They are uh, very keyed in on movement. They are more agile and quicker than their bipedal kin. Uh, leaping from walls and ceilings in their aggressive rush toward their victims. The strain bred at this laboratory, using Ranger for Tyrandus as hosts, support large antler-like projections from their head dome that they use to great effectiveness when in short range of their prey. Uh, they also note that occasionally a, a drone will actually shrink and turn pale white, going along for process and shrinking to a similar height as their original host creature. These are exceptional as a cast among the Xenomorph XS121 species, as they show no Aggressive tendencies toward threats, instead running away from confrontation while shrieking a warning, likely meant to alert the more deadly cast to the intrusion. Prolonged proboscis secretes an organic resin compound found to coat the interior of xenomorph hives, and as such, the number of workers seems to be contingent upon the size of the hive and its needs. Soldiers are more, far more aggressive than their grown counterparts and will even sacrifice their own lives if it means protecting the queen or other higher-ranking xenomorph casts. However, they will take full advantage of any opportunities to sneak up upon potential prey until they are within a range where they have the upper hand. On the other hand, on the other end of the spectrum, they will also swarm even well-armed foes and droves merely to distract an enemy as another group of, uh, of xenomorphs. Sorry, give me a second. Gotta find the right page. Attacks from a different direction. They're tightly subservient to the queen, and it seems their behavior is entirely dictated by her. Uh, it talks about sentries, which are evolved from scouts, more defensive than their lower rank precursors. Uh, they have special nanomicroscopic arrangements of hair-like structures on their hands and feet that allow them to effortlessly scale walls and ceilings, although most other xenomorphs are capable of this as well. Uh, they're entirely subservient to the queen. They're less likely to pursue a target, but they will do whatever the queen desires. But finally, you see notes on uh, all of these sound familiar except for this one. The Praetorian is a truly special cast of the Xenomorph species. It seems to be hive size that prompts the creation of this cast, which is done by force feeding a soldier royal jelly until they begin to molt. It was unknown at the time, but apparently at some point during royal jelly effect testing, our test hive had crossed that threshold and one of the soldiers be rapidly began to molt. It was a miracle that we were able to maintain containment of the resulting cast, as it dwarfs all but the queen herself in size. Behaviorally, it seems to act 
as both a protector of the queen and an intermediary between the queen and her soldiers. When needed, it is able to call soldiers to its aid, though the Praetorian itself is formidable enough to take almost any threat. However, its size precludes agility like its smaller brethren, and it is unable to climb walls or ceilings or enter ventilation ducts. This may be a reason why it can call lesser caste to itself. Lastly, you see a note. There's an interesting link that exists between the Queen and her Praetorians. If the Queen is distressed or caused pain in any way, this triggers a state of hyperaggression in the Praetorian, likely a defense mechanism. The Praetorian will then do anything it can to get to its Queen and protect her from the threat. Great. Well, let's hope we not we don't run into that thing. Yeah, let's hope. Yep. Yeah. What was that? Somebody sneeze. Guys, I hear something. Which way is that coming from? I'm gonna back up into like the corner. I'd like to open the door to the stairway to beat four. Just uh, crack it open this door just to see. Covered it. In resin. It ah. is basically sealed. Ah, oh, that works. Yeah, I, sorry, I should have removed this. Yeah, that works. Look through the glass and see if there's anything on the other side. You notice that the glass is actually shattered. And you can't see much. But you can hear a crashing. Coming from here. Gas and then picks a up. And then a buckling. Kazda thinks something's going to be coming. Get ready. I'm going to check the motion tracker. You see a little bit of motion. I'm going to set up the uh, sentry turret facing south about there. Okay. You got an icon for it? Give me a second. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just giving you the motion tracker. Whoops. Get the tokens. There we go. Okay, so uh, give me a second. Um, Take time. Okay, uh, so which way did you want to have it? I want it facing south from, I believe. Here? Uh, I'd like to put it slightly further up the corridor, that way it doesn't... Okay, it isn't so like here? ...isn't vulnerable at the corner. Here? Uh, let's go with yes if that's not going to shoot us. Uh, let's see which way, well, it depends on which way you moved. So, like, you want it we facing can... this way. Like, yeah. targeting... Okay, so then, basically, as long as you don't go down this hallway, which, unfortunately, if you're going to go further down, you have to go down this hallway to go here. Uh, can we not go left and past uh, the elevator? This elevator only goes up. Oh, no, I was saying past. What do you mean, past? Oh. Oh, okay. Which okay, what are you talking about down? The elevator is to go down is here. If you're gonna go further down, which you're gonna need to to get to the bomb, you're gonna have to travel down this hallway. And even if you travel down this way, you're gonna have to travel up this hallway to get here. Okay, Although, I see what or you actually mean. actually no, you or I mean briefly, if you dashed across, I could have you make a mobility check. Uh is that door uh, right next to B4 uh, open? The one this in the one? corridor? This one here? That one yeah. right there. Yeah, this one is melted. This one is... Uh, this one is closed, I'll say, just for your benefit. All right, that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Where do you want to move? It's going to take you two rounds to set that up. Meanwhile. 
guys. There's some stuff in the room next to us. Let's see. Probably stay away. Maybe we should go down like this way. Yeah. Once I get this thing set up, I'll follow you. Yeah, about that way sounds good. I'm assuming we can probably hear that something could be around the corner. Uh, yeah, you'll hear, uh, if your motion tracker is still out, you'll hear, uh... Yeah, I, I'll keep it out. Guys, there, there's two things Fucking right around close. the corner. Jesus Christ! Alright, let's... <laughs> Uh, take down the gun. My gun's been out. I'm pointing it now. Got any corner. hot tips on how to use this thing, John? Uh, I say point and click. Just like Call of Duty 40. Point and <laughs> click, kid. That's all you gotta do. All right. Back up, guys. We got motion around the corner. Uh... They seem to be toying with you. And then you hear a loud thud. From where? Right here. Okay. Like real loud, huh? Yeah, like you hear the sound of tearing metal. Oh, Jesus. Okay, um, you might maybe might want to maybe might want to stop. Uh, setting up that turret because we might I don't I don't know where we're I don't know where we're going we're gonna die <laughs> alright it seems like oh they're trying to corner us would I hear that thing they're, to my left they're doing a good job and I say my left facing the turret so to my north you've got the turret you've got the turret set up now okay I'll say but would I hear the thing to my north uh the thing oh yeah yeah you I hear would. it I'd like to enter the room. Which room? The room directly to my north. Okay, go ahead. And I don't care what it is, as soon as I see it, I want to shoot yep. it if I physically can. Okay, make me, uh, we're going to do this this way. Give me a second. Take your time. <laughs> Actually, uh, let's try this one. Oh, yeah. Action. Cowabunga. Grab yourself, grab yourself an initiative card. All right. Everybody grab an initiative card, so. Just one? Yep, you all get one. Okay. 13 for Jaden. Oh, okay, give me a second. Uh... I'm going to give... Okay, so... Okay, uh, give me a second. Hey, while you're getting that okay. set up, I'm gonna use my... Hopefully I'll be back. Yeah, me too. What?
Okay, boom, there we go. And uh, I'm gonna lower the music volume a little bit. Okay, so. Everybody read out your initiative values to me uh, and your, so Cheeseburger, what did you get? 33. Okay. Uh, what about? Uh, okay, I'm back. Uh, what did you get for initiative? 21. Okay. Uh, what about you, Scott? Scott got 31. I'm back. 31? Okay. Uh, and then John? John Kane? 17. Okay. And then uh, I'll deal another just one to myself. Okay, that's going to be 47. And then... This is the elf soldier. Yeah, these guys get Last but not least, Okay. Soldier's hey. first turn. Question, if you don't mind me asking. Yep. Were you able to get that set up for Jaden as well? For who? Jaden, me. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Everybody's uh, yep. Everybody should have your turn. I looked through this and didn't see it, but I'll take your word for it. Ah, sorry. Um, why is it? This was a good track for this. Whoops. Undo. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Stop. Showing me. Do you want me to just hand you the bolt gun so that way you can shoot the initiative order? I've got it. It's just, I don't know why it's not letting me. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so. Awesome. Boom. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, who was it? Jaden? Correct. Didn't, uh... Oh, yeah, mm. give me a second. Uh, let me go to objects and tokens. Uh, add your turn. So you had 13, right? Correct. 13, okay. Uh, so, ascending. Okay, so, yeah, you get to go first. So, uh, do you want to... Uh... I'm guessing you want to aim? And fire? Uh, if moving into the room doesn't cost as an action, then... No, because yes. it doesn't count as your action, because the initiative didn't start until, uh... Yeah, okay, I get you. Then yes, I would like to do that. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember. I think aim gives you plus one or plus two. <clears throat> Yeah, plus two. So give yourself a plus two to this shot. Okay, so you missed. Yeah. Yep, sounds about right. The shot hits the ceiling and the Xenomorph just jumps onto the wall out of the way. 
So, uh, now, the soldier's turn. This one's going to dash over here. This one is going to dash over here. And, uh... Five. Die for the queen. The xenomorph... Desperate... Everybody within... Okay, so, uh... Who is within short range? Let's see. That'd be, uh... Everybody... So... Does anybody within, uh, let me see, that this range have, uh, have no acid protection? I don't anymore because I took damage last okay, time. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Does that, am I still wearing that, uh, I would assume suit from so, earlier? Unless you told, unless you told me you took it off. So, I don't think I ever did, no. Okay, so then, yeah, you're fine. So here's what's going to happen. Give me a second. I'm not wearing anything. I don't have any protection. Oh, uh, you don't have your ape suit on? Did I have one from the last episode? Yeah. Oh, then yeah. yeah, I do have it on. I didn't know okay. that I had one on. So then, uh, I, I think Scott was the only one who didn't have an ape suit. Okay. Okay, so uh, you're going to take two damage, roll armor. Who's that, all of us? That are in that point oh, no, clip. just uh, just Kane who isn't acid proofed. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna take two health damage as the acid burns your skin. Uh -oh. ah. Speaking of Kane, it is your turn. Okay. What do you want to do? I say, hmm. We have to get out of here. So, let's run the only route towards the elevator. What? If you want to get towards the elevator, you're going to need to, uh, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long route. Have you would have to go here, yep, yeah. then all the way down, yeah, so through this hall. Direction. We'll be away from those other soldiers. But then I don't know, actually, now we still have to face our turret again at some point. Well, you have more turrets. That's the whole reason why I gave you four. I mean, we have to come back and take down our turret at some point so we can get across the hallway. Well, you'll still be able to get across this way. I would not worry about long-term night now. I would worry about getting your ass to, uh, to where you need to go. Alright, I'm running. Because otherwise I'm going to have to skip your initiative. Let's, let's just... Run down the hallway then. Can I get that far? Former Marine, huh? As you run past me. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lucy Rodriguez, it's your go. Still a little upset that John just ran away from everybody. Uh, is this one with the red X dead already right here? Mm-hmm. Okay, damn. It tore itself apart and showered you guys in acid, but luckily, oh, like everybody Kamikaze. except John has uh, the ape suits that protect against acid. And I'll note that this... Because I'm nice... And because you might find something useful... The chemical research down here? Okay. Um... I say, well, I guess we're running. I yell back to Jaden. I say, Jaden, get your ass out of that room. And uh, I'll 
start making my way to. Yep, so you can, yeah. That's the end of my turn. Oh god. You hear that coming from this direction. And, uh... Let's see. There we Got go. Got a feeling someone's gonna die here. You see a bunch more blips appear on your motion tracker. As you're allowed buckling. A bending steel. Okay, Scott, it's your turn. Oh. Come on, Scott, get the fuck out of there! Your sister yells. Yep. <laughs> we can run down this way too. Okay. Like that Lucy. Start setting up the turret and wait to get it set yep. up until everyone's passed. They're all coming from the yep. north. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Elf soldier number one. It's gonna leap at you. Uh oh. That's not good. Okay, you're gonna need to roll me armor and hope to hell that you get two successes. Oh, Jesus. Uh oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, nah, I'm kinda used to it by this point. The xenomorph, the elf xenomorph leaps onto you. It's smaller than you, but it grabs you by the face. And it just... And then... The inner mouth just... That's the last thing you see as the back of your cranium erupts in a spray of skull fragments and gore. And Great you... Matter. are... dead. No. So, uh, you can take control of uh, Mary Bailey... Or you could take control of uh, Eb Masterson. Uh, whichever one you want. It's up to you. Yeah. Which one was the one with the... Was one of those the one with the red headband on the right there? Yep. Which one was that one? Uh, that's Bloody Mary Bailey. I'll go with her. Okay, let me uh, give you her. Okay. The first technically true character death. So that makes one less for me to control. And then this Xenomorph is going to come around. And uh, it's actually going to attack the turret. These fuckers going... are smart. Okay, so that's two damage. Let's see what the what did I give the turrets for armor? Oof. Okay, so this turret. Hopefully you can see that. Boom. Ralphie, it is your go. I think I'm just gonna run to join the others. Smart. Yeah. 
could hear that from over here. And uh, you're going to see a couple. Um, there we go. That's its turn. Okay, Scott, it's your turn. Uh, it's not Scott. It's Ebb's turn. Oh, Ebb's turn. Sorry. Uh, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna do the same. Uh, and he's gonna say. Guys, move, move past me. I'll set up a turret here. And he's gonna start setting up a turret uh, facing up. Thank God Ib's doing it. And I don't have to spend the next two turns setting my turret up. <laughs> nope. I was going to die if I did that. I might die anyway. No, these two are going to start mauling the turret. But I'm just going to give them one attack. Does anybody want to spend a tur a, a uh, does anybody want to spend a, a story point to keep this thing alive? This turret. Sure, I'll do it. Okay, mark yourself down one story point. Probably should have done that previously if I could have. Whatever. No. Tending to more juicy prey, this Xenomorph is going to come up here. Now, Bloody Mary Bailey, what do you want to do? You can move back and shoot, you can do a full run, or... Uh. You can do full auto with your smart gun. Full if auto physically... means... Any additional successes you get can be used against uh, different targets in the same zone. You could also use a frag grenade, although that probably wouldn't be good at this close range. What other weapons do you have? I'm surprised nobody's been using, uh, nobody's been bothering to use an incinerator. Would that end up damaging the uh, turret? Uh, no, it's metal. I'll say no. But you don't have a, uh, you don't have a, you don't have an oh, yeah, incinerator, but you have, have a smart gun. Ah. Uh. But you wouldn't want to use a frag grenade here either, because it's you're in the same zone as them, and you'd take the blast damage as they would. Yeah. But I'd say the smart gun would be a good choice. Yeah, I'd like to go full auto, and then I'd like to run away. Okay, so full auto is going to be... You have to add one stress level, and now fire. And you're in short range, so it's going to be... Uh, no, that's, there's no bonuses to that. So yeah, just go. Stress of two. Uh, yeah, you are. I already knocked you up one. So. Okay, thank you. Yep, just go. Okay, so you've got uh, a total of uh, three, four damage. Uh, do you want to allocate that to? Uh, do you want to do three damage to each of these guys, or do you want to do four damage to one? Three damage to both of them, if physically possible. Yep, that's possible. Let me, uh... Well, actually, if you don't mind me asking... Wait, no, my character probably wouldn't know that. Never mind, never mind. Okay, so one of them actually takes, uh... Give me a second, let me remove... Yeah, one of them takes three. Oh, yeah, right, because it's, uh... I forgot. Yeah, one of them takes three, and the one behind it only takes two. Uh, so yeah, then run. Wait, I'll let you get two. to here. Thank you. Yep. Jaden, I got where two are you successes gonna go? on the armor check, though. Yeah, which means that, uh, it, oh, yeah, it reduces its damage to one then. Okay. So one Sounds of them is at five and six, one of them is at three and six. Okay. And that's armor piercing, so their armor was halved. Okay. So, Jaden, it's your turn. <clears throat> Jaden's dead. 
Oh, right. Fuck. Let me, uh, delete his. Okay, soldier. <laughs> And remember, you guys have story points, so you might want to use them if you have to. Oh, no. Lucy. Lucy's dead, isn't she? She might be. Let's see uh, how well they roll. Nope. You're fine. Thank God. You managed to dodge out of the way as its inner jaw just boom, goes right past you, nicking Thank your God. ear. Are my pilot shades still intact? Yes. Okay, good. Awesome. Uh, John Kane, what do you want to do? It's the most important part. Yep. Uh, if I were you, I would move past where the sentry gun is going to be set up. Yeah, I'm going to have to move past the sentry gun. Uh, what's my actions? Okay. Yeah, because uh, I could say you could move here and then overwatch if anything comes down this way. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Okay. Yep, so move one and then overwatch, and then if anything goes into your line of sight, which I will be generous and say that you can kind of lean around the corner uh, until he's done setting the gun up, I'll say that that'll be, like, if anything moves within this <clears> corridor... <throat> That you want to shoot at just uh announce so and then you, i'll let you do your range attack okay okay pilot what do you want to do uh, can i like i want to run away but before i run away can i like pop a shot off at this close range uh at a gauge range with a pistol uh yes and then you'll have to make a mobility check otherwise it'll get a free attack against you if you back off oh because like uh tax of opportunity type stuff okay yeah um well, I need to do it. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. So, close combat? Uh, no, it'll be uh, ranged combat ranged. because it's a pistol. Okay. So, use okay. your pistol. Bang, bang. Okay, that's a hit. Uh, it's not armor piercing, right? Uh, I don't believe so. It doesn't say. Okay. Yeah, if it doesn't say armor piercing, then it's not armor piercing. Yeah, it doesn't. And then mobility it check? It bounces off the armor. Fuck! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, make me a mobility check. Alright. You can also use a story point to auto pass. Use it. <laughs> use Wait, it? Wouldn't, okay. wouldn't he roll with the attack for his gun, not range combat? Oh, yeah. Uh, then he would have got a plus one or something, but I don't think it would have mattered. Because yeah. the Xeno got three successes on its armor. So, yeah, just okay. back up. Uh, I'll let you back up to here. Oh. Okay. Can I also go into Overwatch, too? Uh, no, that would be... Uh... I would have to have not shot to have done that, right? Yeah. Okay. I figured. Just wanted to ask. Yep. Yeah. Scott is going to book it. How far can I go? Uh, yeah, you can get to right about there. Okay. And that's where I'm going. Elf soldiers are gonna, uh... Whoops. They're gonna come around this way. And that's their full movement. Ralphie? Alright, so... Just gonna shout... Say hello to my little friend, motherfuckers! And then I'm gonna open fire down the hallway. Do you wanna do full auto, or...? Will I still get to run after I take the shot? So that's my plan. Uh, yeah, if you're on yeah, if you're not aiming. Alright, yeah, I'm not aiming, I'm just gonna <laughs> spray down the hallway. Okay. Uh, I'll do full oh, auto. Okay, full auto. Then raise your stress level by one before you, uh... you fire 
Mary's about to get shot in the back of the dome on accident. Nope. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just kidding. Yep. So then, uh, that's gonna be the uh, that's gonna be two potential damage to a soldier, and it's armor piercing. So I would assume I hit the closest one. Yep. So uh, yeah, it takes uh, it takes one damage. All right, awesome. You now I'm going to run around shriek, the corner. As a bunch of acid blood splashes back onto the floor. Okay, then move past. I you think I hit as... it. I think I hit it. Yep, you hear as uh, yet uh, more be... blips are appearing. Coming from every, pretty much every direction now. Okay, Eb is going to, uh, it's going to take him one more round. Because it's been one round to finish setting up the turret. The elf soldiers are going to move in. And, uh... Okay, that's all out attack. Okay, make me an armor roll. Talking to me. Um, whoever, yeah, Dreamer. All right. Are you really gonna kill yeah. both of his characters? No, it's gonna. My you're just God. gonna take two damage. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Soldier is actually gonna run up this way. Alright, I'm using my Overwatch now. Oh, okay. So, yep, use it. Alright, so I just attack with my pulse rifle. Yep, pulse rifle. Uh. Or not. Do you want to push that? Uh, yes. Let's push it. Okay. Come on, John. One. I'm a better shot than you right now. <laughs> add one stress level, right? And roll again? Yep, add one stress level and then re-roll. Say, maybe you're John's dad, Ralphie. I'm too good looking to be his kid. <laughs> okay, that's going to be, uh, so what do you want to do with that extra success? Put it on to damage, or do you want to knock the thing back? Uh, how many damage has it taken so far? Oh, uh, this one has not taken any damage. I the thought that's no, the one. Taken this one's taken one damage. Okay. Yeah, I shot let's, that one. Let's so go. you would be able to do three damage potentially to it, or you could take, you could do two damage and knock it back. Let's knock it back. Okay. So first, let me uh, roll armor. Okay, it fails both, so it does take two. So it's at five. And, uh... Boom. And it gets knocked back. Nice. Mary Bailey, what do you want to do? What is the range of a frag grenade? Uh, it's a, it's an entire zone. Everything within a zone uh, will take blast. Uh, let me see. What is it? Blast power. Uh... I do think it's nine. Yeah. I was reading over the stats. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I could say that this could be a zone just for because uh, I'm. I can say if you if you pass a mobility check and move back, then uh, then I'll let you uh, cause, or if you just use a story point, it's up to you. I have no story points. I used my story point to make sure that other turret didn't die. 
Oh, okay. Uh, well. Unless it's already dead. No, it's it's still alive because okay. he used the story point. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you pass a mobility check to disengage, and then you know you can use a frag grenade to attack all of these. Um. Oh, hey, Bryce, yeah, how's it going? Check. Okay. Any mods? Uh, no. Want to push My that? Notifications, uh, Can I push always it scare me. Uh, I'll let you for this case, just because I'm being generous. Lost one stress, then treat, uh, do it again? Yep. All right. We're in the thick of it right now. Oh. Oh, no. Well, mm. let's see, uh,. Let's see what attack they even do. Wait, actually, do I still have my other action? Uh, well, this is you disengaging, so... Since you were unsuccessful in your attack, they get a free attack against you before anything else happens. Yay. Three, so the same as last time. So at least it's not gonna kill you no matter what. Yay. Okay, so, uh, make me an armor roll. Okay, you only take one damage. But you now are able to move back. Alright. Uh, am I able to get behind the turret? Uh, I'll say sure. Would it be uh, reasonable for me to say I can throw a grenade uh, before I move, yeah. essentially? Yeah, Alright, yes, I'm very... then... Yeah, I'd yeah. like to do that. Okay, go ahead, move yourself, and then uh, roll me 96. Uh, I actually cannot move see my there, turret. Belt. Okay. Let me, uh, oh, let me see. This should be, there we go. That should work. Thank you. Yep. Now you've tossed that. So roll me uh 96. Give me a sec. And then they automatically take one damage anyway. So this one, uh, so they'll be. 96 plus zero. Okay, good? let's see. That's three. So they will do uh, their armor check. And they fail and they both die. Uh, yes! Nice. Double kill. <laughs> Boom! This soldier is going to clamber around. This soldier is going to come in. This one is, uh, didn't, did any, uh, Lucy, didn't you have Overwatch on? No. Uh, did anybody else have Overwatch on? No, it was just John. I wanted to, but I had already taken my action. Okay, John, I'll let you overwatch again, just because, again, I'm being really nice, and things are going to get a lot harder. Okay. Uh, attack. Yeah, it'd be better with somebody with a armor-piercing gun to shoot anyway. Okay. So, let's see. Oof, it takes no damage. That's not good. It's not looking good for us. Well, it does eviscerate itself. So, uh, who here? Uh, I think that's just gonna be the two of you. Uh, Bloody Mary Bailey and, uh, and John. So, uh, let's see. You could let Ralphie try overwatching if you really want. Okay, so each of you guys roll me armor. Uh, Kane and Bailey. Oh, ooh. Kane, reduce your armor to three. Or actually, no, to, to four, sorry. Your armor is now four as the acid melts through it. Okay. And then, uh, let me double check something. Uh... <clears throat> see. C. 
So, uh, you take two damage, Bloody Mary. How? What does that take you to? Dead. No, that takes you to zero. So immediately roll me a d66. Oh, yeah, good point. Death roll. 31. A broken nose. Manipulation nice. and observation are at minus one. And right now, you're not, you can crawl and mumble through the pain, but you can't perform any other actions and you can't roll for any skills. Hmm. So your nose just got melted off, basically. Yep, you look like a fucking ghoul from, uh, Fallout. from Fallout. Yep. Yes. Yep, that sounds about right. Yep, John Kane, it is now your turn. What are you looking at? Yeah, Smooth that's skin. Those are a thing. <laughs> you could use an incinerator. Oh wait, is this is this thing still alive now, or? It's still alive. Oh no, no, it's not because it eviscerated itself. Yeah, I was gonna say. So. Boom. All right, I'm gonna aim and fire at the other one. Okay, no. so plus two to your uh, plus two to your roll. Okay. Can I allow the characters around me to use me as a uh, what's the term? Equipment pool. Yeah, they can take your stuff if you want. If you let them, I mean, you're. Okay, so that's uh. Let's do let's do extra damage. Okay, give me a second. So yeah, if any of you guys need frag grenades, I got two of them. Okay, so let's see. That's gonna be uh, against a soldier. Your last dying words. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay, it <laughs> takes uh, it takes three damage, and uh. It screeches in pain as blood splatters against the walls. Uh, now, uh, what do you want to do, uh, pilot? Uh, I'm still pretty much just terrified, so I'm going to run back towards my bro. Okay. What's up, bro? Let's not die. Come over <clears throat> here. And yet more xenomorphs are closing in. Someone else can try and throw a grenade down the hall. You're just seeing this just swarm. God damn it. We need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and if you look at your motion tracker, you'll see more of them are coming. Uh, yeah. Two more turns left. Well, two more people left okay. before the uh, goes Scott, up. Okay, Scott, what do you want to do? I'll admit, I would highly recommend looking in the chemical research lab. You might find some important stuff. But... Yeah. I'm gonna bust down that doorway and come this way. Okay, cool. Now, Ralphie? I think I'm just gonna follow them down. Um, yeah, because they'll get the turret up before another alien could attack us, so. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. Yes, you could do that. You're going to hear that, and then... Even more Xenos are coming in. You don't know where the hell they're coming from, but they just are relentless in their pursuit. Ebe is going to be... He's pressing buttons on this little laptop. And finally... He's like, okay, we're done, let's go! And as he does, you are going to finally hear. Where is it? Where did it go? Did I not put it in here? I could have sworn I did. Oh, well, uh, I'll have to look for it later. Unless.
Ah. There we go. My bad. I didn't have it in. Where did it go? Sorry. Damn it. It's all right. Things going ham. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Hell yeah. I laughed through choking on my own blood. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. <laughs> and a happy new year. And we are going to end initiative for now. Ooh, nice. Did the really big one ever move in front of my turret? Uh, no. Not yet. Aw. Aw, shucks. Okay. I'm gonna follow them down. Yeah. The research as now. you're, uh, yep, yeah, as you're moving, you... You'll you'll keep you'll occasionally hear the uh, the turret keep going. Short right. little bursts. Yeah, just. <laughs> and uh, now that you're in the room, give me a second. I've got something for you. If I may ask someone here, could y'all patch me up? If that's physically possible for me to ask. Yeah, that'll be a, that'll be a, uh, let me see what troll that'll be. Um, yep, yeah, so, yeah, it'll, it'll be a medical aid, uh. Scott grabbed which... the med kit earlier. Scott also doesn't have any, yep. has zero medical aid. Yep, if you have a, uh. Let's see, um, where is it, uh, uh, plus two, if you have a personal med kit. Okay. Yeah, I'll go, go ahead and try and heal up Mary. Thank you much. Is this considered a safe location? Uh, not quite yet, but don't worry. I've got some plans. Okay, so I've so, got... Inside this room... You are going to find... A whole bunch of notes, as well as beakers filled with kind of a translucent green fluid. You're going to find a canister. Uh, you're not sure what it is, uh, but uh, it's different from the rest. And you've got a whole bunch of notes in here. And... Uh, Go to your, uh, go to the handout section. Do you guys see it? Oh, yes. yes. I think so, yes. Awesome. Uh, nearby, you see a bunch of uh, development notes. According to the notes, it is a functional prototype that fires xenomorph acid blood. And the table has two spare canisters, if anybody wants to take it. Um, I drop my assault rifle and run towards it. Yeah, I'll pick one up, too. Oh, there's only one. Oh. Oh, there's two canisters. Two, yeah, two reloads, Yeah, basically. yeah, okay. 
I want the cool space alien gun. They do note that you should read carefully. <laughs> Let me read the read the uh read the handout carefully before you make your decision. Okay, probably a good idea. <clears throat> You'll note that the, uh, what appears to be the main chamber is actually made out of two xenomorph head domes that have been basically welded together. As, uh, and the primary, uh, muzzle of the gun seems to be made out of, uh, some form of the xenomorph anatomy. Oh, it's not even useful against xenomorphs. But you never know, it could come it's, in handy. It's not... Are, are are all the xenomorphs XX121? Yes, that is the ta okay. that is the designation for xenomorph. Uh okay. so you'll also see uh cut up uh samples of the material that you've seen on the walls and floor. Uh and on whiteboards in the room here are uh, various series of organic compound formulas. Uh you're wondering maybe those are the compound formulas that uh, make up the alien resin. Uh but you're unsure, and the notes seem to indicate that they were still trying to figure out the precise composition of the resinous compound, and how the aliens managed to secrete it because of how valuable it would be to protect against acid attack. Um, also, uh, by some of the notes is this yellow-green canister. Uh, this actually seems to be a sample of the royal jelly that uh, has been mentioned in multiple other reports. It seems they were also testing this subject uh, substance to determine its composition and whether or not it could be used to con uh, enhance combat performance in humans. From their notes, you see that it apparently does enhance strength and stamina, but the rest of the notes that from there, uh, from that point are indecipherable. Uh, does anybody want to take a closer look at it? I'll take a closer look at it. Um, uh, make me an observation roll. Before that, I did roll medical. Okay, what did you get? Primarily, I got one success. Okay, so then you're back to one health. Yay. Better than yep. no health. Yep. yep. All right, now I'll roll. Observation. Yep. All right, that's one success. Okay. You notice the biohazard icon on the, uh, on the canister. So, you're guessing that there probably are side effects and that the enhancing strength and stamina probably comes at a very, at some cost. All but right. you're not sure why. Would any of our characters be familiar with high-end narcotics? Uh, Mary Bailey probably would. Would I know anything about stuff made with royal jelly, despite the fact not knowing that it was this stuff in particular? Uh, n you might have some knowledge that uh, some of the most addictive uh, addictive drugs out there, uh, particularly ones with uh, with side effects that involve increased uh, aggression and psychoses, uh, might have something to do with royal jelly. Okay. If I'm able to, I'd like to make that aware to the room. Okay. So is anybody going to take the uh, the acid rifle? The only thing oh. I could see the acid rifle being good for is maybe like if we come up to a door that we want to go through and it yeah. is locked or something. And we don't Who know knows? how to unlock it. Who says Xenomorphs are the only enemies you're going to face in this campaign? Uh, well, I think since Scott is the only one who doesn't have a weapon at the moment. That'd be fair. I think okay, a man yeah. of science would take the yeah. prototype yeah. gun. No matter what, evidence is evidence. Yep. Oh, definitely. So I think okay. Scott will hang on to it. So you guys think this royal jelly goes good with peanut butter? Yeah, probably about as much as roids. So, where do you guys want to go now? I say we book it east. Yeah. Probably a good idea. So, you're going to head into the cast research room? 
Uh, if that's that one room with the four tables in it, then yes. Yep. Okay. Good. Move your characters there. And then I'll move, uh... God, I keep forgetting it. Thank goodness probably one of you guys is going to die soon, so that I won't have to deal with it anymore. Uh, Scott? Gonna be me. What, one second, I was typing. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, so in this room, it's called... Oops. Cast Research. So, you actually find a... Uh... Sorry, I'm getting my notes uh, all mixed up. Ah, here we go. So, there is, uh, on the whiteboard, you actually see, uh, let me grab, uh, boom. You get a handout, or, uh, uh, look at your handouts, uh, that's what's on the whiteboard. They show a series of progressions depicting the alien creatures. Uh, there's only one that, uh, that is on the lab, that is on there, that isn't shown, uh, and it is a giant depicted creature, one with, uh, it actually has six limbs rather than four, a massive crown-shaped head, and just a giant kind of worm-like abdominal structure. Uh, however, there's a question mark there and a link that, to something that looks like the insects you saw before, but larger and with a sort of webbed connection between the finger-like appendages. There's also a branch off uh, from the drone, which you should see, uh, to that pale white creature you observed before. Uh, this appears to be a development cycle for the aliens. Anyone here got a Polaroid? <laughs> you, there are notes, uh, if you want to pick them up. I'd say whoever's got a duffel bag full of notes so far, we'd stick them back in there. Yep, I can, um, I'll put you want me to bag. read you what the notes say? Yes, actually, if you sure. can. So these are thorough notes on what the research refer to as casts of the species Xenomorph XX121. The first two stages of the life cycle, called Ovomorphs and quote-unquote facehuggers, which specifically are given the name Manumala noxahydria. <clears throat> the smooth-headed L-spawn creatures are called drones, which grow into the ridge-headed soldiers. Uh, the smooth-headed antler possessing ones are called scouts, which grow then into sentries. Uh, there is mention of a Praetorian cast, uh, but the researchers are unsure of exactly what causes a soldier to metamorphose into a Praetorian. According to the notes, it happened unexpectedly, and it nearly was a uh, emergency. The notes do make mention of exposure to royal jelly. Uh, they also mention the pale worker cast, noting that they seem to randomly moat from drones, though are quite rare. Uh, speculate, they speculate that in a true hive, uh, there would these workers would be far more abundant, but in captive circumstances, they're less needed than usual. Uh, and then make me, uh, whoever wants to make me an observation roll to find, uh, the last paper. I'll go ahead and do that. You can do it. Sam. Thank you. Yes. The largest creature, the one spawned from a reindeer, is referred to as the queen. From what you can tell, there are two competing hypotheses among the researchers and ones they were planning to test. They know that a queen can result from the impregnation of a host by a special subspecies of Manumala noxhydria, but what prompts the spawning of such a subcast is beyond current understanding. Based on superficial similarities, it has also been hypothesized that in the absence of a queen, a drone or, if already present, a praetorium will molt into a queen, but they had yet to test this hypothesis at the time of writing. It seemed unlikely they would get permission to do so, as it would require somehow removing or terminating the current queen, which is an incredibly important uh, and valuable specimen. Um, you also note uh, a few notes 
related to uh, bioluminescence and uh, chemical signals, particularly wavelengths in the uh, in the red spectrum. Hmm. Wavelengths in the red spectrum, huh? Yeah, bioluminescence related to rain wavelengths in the red spectrum. Just Very like that jellyfish that we found upstairs. Yeah, I guess you could say that. What a coincidence, huh? Hmm. You guys think they did something to Rudolph? Oh, they most definitely probably did. Yeah. Sick bastards. Okay. Oh boy. I no guess way, you can say they were up to some reindeer games. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give up uh, for that pun. Uh, we're all dead. No. Yes. You're gonna hear, uh, <laughs> this is what you're gonna hear in the background. Uh, you're gonna hear. No, what did I do? I'm really? sorry, everyone. But, uh, and also you're going to hear, uh, what is it? It's a very wet sound. And Mary Bailey, you're going to gain one health. Yay. Because... That pun was so bad that it basically, the acid wanted to avoid hearing it, so it just started demelting your face a little bit. Wonderful. You could say the pun was uh, really on the nose, so to speak. Oh, no. <laughs> For that, you're going to grow a, a giant pimple on your nose. I'm and sorry, I had to. He's also going to heal one hell, but that's it. <laughs> I'm only doing this because you're going to fucking need it. That that I am. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, where are you guys going? I say we took take a look at the uh, door to the east. Okay. Let me just make sure I have, uh... Hey, look north of there for me. Make sure we don't get shot. We're not shot the staff. Yeah. I'll pull the yeah, motion tracker nothing. back out. Good. You, you see nothing. Cross. Okay. Give me a okay, going in here. As you enter the room, it's marked impregnator storage. You can once again feel the familiar nip of cold air. On the far right and back of the room, you can see a wall with several large green jars scattered across several metal shells. There's also a lot of broken glass along the walls. There's a large ticker above both walls. It's scrolling through temperature and condition. Watching the ticker, you see that the temperature in this room is 2 Celsius, with an arrow in a downward trend. As the ticker refreshes, the screen fills with two-digit codes. Most codes of A1 through G10 are displayed, although several aren't displayed. Next to each code is a temperature warning signal. Eventually, the screen refreshes. This time, the missing codes appear. Next to these is a medical warning symbol. Getting close to the wall, you see that the broken glass on the floor is actually shattered jars. Examining the intact jars, you see that the weird creatures inside are those large eggs you found upstairs, as well as a few of those dead scorpion-like creatures you saw upstairs. They're completely motionless, suspended in some sort of solution. They are completely non-responsive. Find me before the first estate. I would suggest we nope out of here immediately. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. Yeah. Not a bad idea. That, yeah, that's uh, creepy. That, that seems like a great <gasps> idea. <clears throat> hey, uh, Bless how you. much noise does a cutting torch make? Because I'd thoroughly suggest making sure nothing else can follow us through that door. Uh, which door? The door, the door we just came out of. He wants to weld it shut. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll yeah. take uh, that'll take two rounds. Uh, it's relatively quiet. Yeah, if we it's can, quiet enough for someone's not going to hear yeah, us. Yeah, nothing's gonna. Uh, yeah, 
Just roll me, um, yeah, heavy machinery, and, uh, depending on how many successes you hit, I'll let you specifically do it as quietly as possible. I'm not the one here with the cutting torch, so. Okay, well, whoever has it, uh. Did someone else here have a cutting torch? With me. Someone, some of you, one of you has it. Oh, it might be Eb, because uh, Jaden, I, I forgot Jaden died horribly. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Okay, uh, let's see. Heavy machinery. Oh, hey, should my armor be four? What? Uh, should yeah. I... Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, he does it so quietly, you can, aside from the light, you don't hear a thing. Wonderful. Perfect. Although his uh, power supply goes down by one. So this door is now officially uh, welded shut. Nice. Okay, where to now? You guys Probably... want to go down to B4? Yeah, we yeah, should we get should to that. Yeah, we should probably make our way to B4. We should yeah. book it okay. to the elevator. Yep, so guys, uh, move up to here. Well, the elevator only goes up. And we're no, this still elevator goes go... down. Oh, I thought this you said it went... goes down. I thought you no, said it No, this elevator, down. the far one, the one by the stairs over here, goes up. This elevator goes up? This el the elevator you're headed towards, this, this one here one. goes down. Okay. I mean, if you look and, at the uh, symbol, that one's got a down arrow, that one's got an up arrow. All right, well, I've Guys? got it zoomed out to 110%, so I can't see an arrow at all, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. GG. <laughs> yep, there's still something there. Okay. Yeah, I'll give uh, you guys... Uh, sorry, you saying? Go ahead, move. Run. <laughs> Are you guys going to press the button? Yes. Hit the button. Yes, very much hit the button. Shoot my gun. As okay, the door is closing. And the door is closed. <laughs> okay. And now you can move your uh, tokens to uh, the elevator here. That scared me so bad I let a loud one rip in the elevator and it awesome. smells terrible <laughs> it smells worse than the alien hive now here's where the things get the most interesting in my opinion it's all the hot chocolate i'm sorry guys <laughs> what are those elves putting in that hot chocolate royal jelly <laughs> <laughs> what if though a healthy sudden, alternative to caffeine. All of a sudden, Ralphie just starts all raging happened. out and just like fucking, fucking taking Xenomorphs out with his bare hands and he's just yeah, punching he just, them out and shit. Yeah, he just takes the Praetorian and snaps its spine over his he knee. Fucking, he fucking suplexes it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. My tongue grows a mouth. Right <laughs> uh, okay, you guys are on level B4. Where do you want to go? Is this the basement? Is this the lowest level? Nope. <clears throat> it goes all the way down yeah, to I, B6. I see, another, I see another elevator. Do you yeah. now? Well, I... my character doesn't, but the yep. player does. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're going to notice uh, there's no evidence of the previous structure, really. Every single inch of every bit of floor is saturated in resin. It's dripping a viscous, stinking fluid like a vile nectar, and the heat is almost unbearable. It's so hot and chemically unbalanced down here that you can actually see your breath. There's uh, no other light sources aside from your helmets and flashlights. Uh, so... Let's move to the end of the hall. Well, let's make our way down. Yep, uh, you're probably going to want to check out some of this stuff. Uh, yep. You see yeah. something that says pointing up that says Project Blade Runner. 
sounded like so something on that uh, list. And then, yep, once you get up to here, you'll see uh, Project uh, Blade Runner Programming, Assembly and Storage, Uh, or, yeah, assembly is here. I'll go into the assembly. Okay. Wait a second. The melted door makes it easy to navigate, but it also means the resin has made its way in here as well. The little bits that are exposed make it hard to tell the purpose of the room. But you see long metal tables. You see several bodies on the tables. Some are more complete than others. They're in an upright position, though their heads are removed. Examining the bodies, you find no evidence of rot. And instead of meat, you find servos and tubing. And a little bit of milky white fluid. Oh. In the corner God of the damn. room, Milk bloods. you find several sealed boxes. Do you guys want to open them? Yes. Uh, inside, almost all of them are elf uniforms. One of the boxes, though, is a lot smaller, labeled Casings, Delivery to Assembly. Do you want to open that one? Yeah, I'll open it. Opening it, you find a box. Opening it, you find a box, and there is a small egg-shaped device inside. Its shell is made of metal, but there are several gaps. Inside, you can see copper coiling and capacitors. So a series of wires of... juts out the top of the gadget and connects to what seems to be a timer. Does it look like a non-prototype version of the it bee does. blizzard? It does. It looks like the EMP bomb. Mm. Wait a minute, guys. Androids. Elf uniforms. The elves are androids. They replaced all the villagers. <laughs> so do you guys want to check out Project Blade Runner? Yes. Yeah. Looks like we should. Any notes in this room of value? Uh, nothing, no notes in this room. You would expect programming, based on the fact that, uh, programming probably has notes. Okay. What, what's in right this there. back room? Hmm? Oh, that room is completely, uh, the door is almost completely covered in res uh, resin. You would have to use a welding torch to break it down. Uh, in there is just, uh, storage. It's basically, uh, just parts. Android parts. Uh, yeah, and tubing and just stuff like that. Milk. Yeah, extra fluid. Uh, <laughs> oh, so you're in here? Give me a second. Let me... Well, I mean, I don't know. I, was, I thought everybody was going. Oh, no, you can go there. Uh, I just needed to... Yeah. If you're, if you're going to go there, uh, note that the door is not going to fully open. It's only going to open enough for you to kind of peer inside. Okay. Whoops. So I'm standing in front of the door then, I guess. Okay, give me a second. Uh... I'll follow so... behind. Guess we'll follow. What do I see? Give me a second. Uh... Okay. Give me just a minute. Crouching under the door, you find a less resin-filled room, but the corruption has definitely taken root. Using your flashlights, you're able to get a good sense that this room is huge. You count 24 metal reinforced glass crucibles across the room, and three pallets full of a clear plastic bag. They look like fertilizer bags, but their contents are an eggshell white. Throughout the rest of the room, you see lab stations full of what seem to be surgery equipment. Forceps, sutures, and even medical screws. Examining further, you find several robotic arms and legs. Some have a pale rubber stitch to them. What's most surprising to you is the size of the limbs. They're all child-sized, but they have the proportions of an adult. Is there... Do I think that I could, like, pry this door open, or would we need... Uh, unfortunately to cut it open? not. You'd need a power loader. Yeah, okay. Could Ralphie squeeze in there? Uh, yeah, he, he, he could probably roll around uh, and get in there. You want to take a look, Ralphie? Uh, what do you guys think? 
I say, take a look, but just stay low and be quiet. See what you can see what you can see in there. Hey, one of you guys. If we're gonna be sitting here for a while, would you mind setting up a turret facing us off? Yeah, I'll set up. I I've got one. That's the last one left. Yeah. So, yeah. No, you guys only set up two. I thought we only took three. You took four. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess we got two left. So I'll set mine up right here. Okay. So, uh, south. I'm just going to go in. We'll put it back quick like right here. Yeah, that way they can't ambush it from the side. Oops. Yeah. I'm just going to quietly creep up and... Wait, like, you're going to set it here? Yeah, facing south. But how do you plan to get to the elevator? Can't we pick it up? Uh, no. Once they've oh. set down, you can't pick them back up. Oh, oh, I thought I heard you say that earlier. Then I guess never mind. No, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> then well, never we mind. could turn it off, right? But we just couldn't. Yeah, yeah, you could turn it off, uh, but then. Uh, and and I technically have the head mounted sight, so I could I could have yeah, it. Yeah, you could manually aim it that time. So, but then you'd have I, you have to like, have it... hop the corner. Uh, Fuck it then. Last. Take. We didn't place the turret then. Okay. I'll let you uh, wreck on that. Yeah. So, Ralphie, you want to go into the room? Uh. Yep. What do you want to look for? I'm not really sure, actually. Um. I mean, I'm assuming this is where they make the android parts. Uh, this seems to be where uh where they do some of the uh. Yeah, some of the manufacturing, the individual limbs and uh, body parts. Uh, you see that uh, there's a there's a bucket of what looks to be uh, heads. They're making replicants. That, that go to uh, that say take to programming for individualization and uh, and replication of host features. And uh, it appears these uh, these crucibles are basically filled with uh, synth skin synth, or sin skin. I honestly think seeing this at nine years old would probably really freak me out. So I'm just going to get the hell back out of there. Okay. Yeah, that's smart. There's heads and there's arms and and there's all this this liquid skin and Sorry, Ralphie. I'm sorry. I grab him and hug him. Okay. So, you also note the uh, sign south uh, to programming. Let's head to programming. Yeah. I think you guys can probably doing? tell tell which room uh, which ones are programming. Computer room. Yeah. Would it be yep. at all valuable to check the other door? Uh, you can, if you want. Uh, you're gonna find it's more of the same. All right, then I'll just keep moving. Let me just uh. Excuse me. Boom. Okay, so you guys are gonna go into programming. So uh, as your uh, where do you guys go? Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm looking on a on different level. There we go. Okay. Now, where the hell is Eb? Did I forget He's to move him? all the way back at the beginning uh, yeah, he, at the he, elevator. Yeah, he would have he would have been following you guys along. Yeah. So, both of these rooms are programming. All right, I'll go into, the, into this one. Okay. So, uh, there are rows upon rows of uh, terminals with a massive central data bank in the middle of the room. Attached to every terminal, you see an individual elf head with electronic cables reaching out the back, connecting to the terminal. Like severed head that's got cables coming out of it. Yeah, the head is uh, it's not like severed like bloody, but like it's right clean and neat. Um, uh, and it's like a, uh, do it's you like want to turn on? The, do you want to turn on the terminal? Uh, yeah, I'll turn it on. Uh. There's a record of names, and each has an accompanying date. There are literally hundreds of names. No more than, you know, a few hundred, maybe 300 or 400 names. Uh, a few seem familiar. 
some of the same uh, names that you saw in the offices upstairs. Do you want to continue scrolling back? Um, yeah, sure. Okay, so you scroll through the entire list, and there's probably a total of, uh, you'd say probably at least 600 to 800 names. Uh, and you'll note, as you go further back, you note these names. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen, and the very name at the very end of the list, with the earliest date, is Rudolph. The most recent of these nine names are Donner and Cupid, both on the same date. Uh, Associated with uh, the records of Donner and Cupid is a single note. Do you guys want to read it? Yes. 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 Cease manufacturing of Pro Project Blade Runner Code Ranger for components. We have achieved complete possible sampling. There is also an asterisk next to the name Rudolph. But What's it does name? not have any attached file information. Okay. That's why they're eating less. Because they're... they're... <laughs> They're fucking... They don't need to eat. Yep. Okay. Do you think the other uh, computer room would have different information, or is it going to be more of the same? Go ahead and check. All right. I'll go ahead and check. It's more of the same. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love messing with you guys. It's fine. That's fine. Good. That's good. I mean, there's less of us. Well, <clears throat> say we anything? should take one of the heads. Say we should what? Take one of the heads. Take one of the heads. Oh dear. I think we Scary should get to the elevator. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I think we should maybe head downstairs. <laughs> yeah. As we walk further down the hallway, you begin to hear. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That was good. It sounds like dozens are gathering below you. Along with the shrieking, you hear a central roaring and powerful vibrations. A massive bang followed by the sound of acidic hissing fills your ears and you can feel the ground shaking. Oh no. Do they Another just door... bang. Now where are we actually looking for these? We're not looking he for these. He said they're coming from below us. All right. Um... Let's move to the elevator. I'm gonna move. Yeah, I'm gonna move to the elevator. All right, now are get these, in, get in, uh, get in. Openings... No, are these elevators equipped with a uh, designated closed door button? I'm hitting the next button and the closed door button at the same time. I'm just like rapid firing. No, I'm saying y'all might want to get out of there for a sec. Whoever's got it, hand me a uh, turret. I'm gonna stick the turret in the elevator. I'm going down there alone. I'll come back up when either they're all dead or I am. Oh, okay. What? I'll give you my turret. Yes, please. And my head mounted sight. I don't need the sight. I'm just going to stand behind it and let it do the work. Inside, you may need it. All right. You got the sentry turret. All right. I'd like to make sure the door is closed completely first. Then I'd like to start setting up the turret, and then I'd like to hit the down button uh, after the turret is actually set up facing the door. Face the closed door, specifically. Oh, that makes sense. Sorry. Let's see if this will work. Huh? Alright, when did you cut out? Uh, so... When did he? When did I cut out? Yes. That's Hello? what I was asking you. Yes. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? 
Yeah, I'm working on getting my internet back. Okay. Give me a second. Uh, <clears throat> oh, okay. There we go. One second. There we go. There we go. All right, you back? Yep. Where did I cut out for you guys? I'm not entirely know. sure. Okay, so what was I saying? Uh, you hadn't said anything, but for a little bit, Mary started to do stuff. Oh, okay. Essentially, the music started, and you started talking about hearing banging. Okay, let me do this again. Should so we as, all move into that center corridor? As you corridor walk further again? down the hallway, you guys, uh, you're not going to have time to move. You okay, begin to hear yeah, shrieking we're... from the floor below. Oh, no, it I was like going to move back to our gathering below you. Along with the shrieking, you hear a central roaring sound. And powerful vibrations. A massive bang, followed by the sound of acidic hissing fills your ears. And you can feel the ground shaking. Another, another uh, bang and more hissing soon follows. And one more powerful crash as something impacts the floor below you and causes the resin around you to shatter. The room, the room and hallway around you violently drops in altitude and causes you to lose your footing. Everybody make me a mobility check. Ah, stink. And I thought my plan had some semblance of validity to it. Okay, everybody Scott. who failed is gonna fall prone. There's another shift in latitude, and you can see that the hallway is falling apart. Previously coated floors are exposed, and pipes spring up from the floor. You catch glimpses of black insectoid hands reaching through the metal before quickly being severed or crushed. The horde screaming of the creatures is closer now than ever. But it's occasionally drowned out by an aggressive roar. A final collapse and the ceiling splits apart like a turkey being carved. Before you're exposed to whatever's on the other side, you hear the rest of the floor collapsing and a deafening orchestra of groaning metal splitting concrete, and lab equipment being utterly destroyed. And then... Everything falls silent. Apart from the concrete pebble and the occasional glass shatter, the ceiling that was once protecting you lies crumpled and the walls have fallen. When the dust settles, you see that you are no longer in a corridor maze, but a tremendously sized room. No walls, no door, and no way up. So, place yourselves here. I think we've Before entered the final boss chamber. You feel the ground shake once again, but instead of an earth-shattering bang from below you, it sounds like something massive stepping on the debris on the same level as you. As the stomps slowly get closer, you hear deep, aggressive breathing. When your lights reach the source, you realize just how horrible it is. Your lights reveal the creature, and it is enough to make your heart jump into your mouth. It is an alien that towers over even the massive creatures you've already encountered, at least twice as tall as its skin. Its elongated cranium is adorned with a colossal, triangular crest, and four spiked tubes protrude from its back. Its arms end in four razor-sharp claws, each as large as your hand. Its long, segmented tail ends in a blade twice as large as your own head. This is a creature from beyond your worst nightmares. And you're trapped in a room with it. <sighs> mm. 
Okay. Oh, guys. I think we're How all do you dead feel? now. Are you so I'm questioning how far I can jump. Uh, normal human amount. Would that be high enough to stick my hand in its arm? I mean, my hand in its face? Uh, it's all the way over here. Oh. Well, I meant in terms of height, like if I got to it. It's ten feet tall. Ah, so the answer is no. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Mary, what did you, uh, what did you get? Okay, uh, and then, uh, Scott, what did you get? 20. Okay, so... You see, I'm being merciful by letting you guys go before they do. Or draw before they do. John Kane, you got 38. Thirty-eight. Okay, and then Lucy, you got three. Just so you know, I'm gonna have to go soon. Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. This is taking a long time. Uh, whoops. No, I, this has been I, a long session. So. Sorry, that's my fault. I probably didn't. Let's see, John Kane. No, it's all right. Who do I not have here? Lucy. Now we kind of was able to actually get pretty immersed in this sort of stuff, which just takes a while. So. Yeah. Yep. I wouldn't okay, call and it then, really uh, anyone's fault. And if anything, I'd call no, it ours. It was just, it was just a want, good game. Okay, as long as you guys enjoyed it, that's all I care about. I've been yeah. having a blast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, it's been great. Yeah. <laughs> I love okay, the references, too. I don't okay. even get half of them, and I still like it. Let's see. Who? Uh, who... <laughs> oh, Ralphie, where are you? I got 34. Okay. Okay, and then, uh, let me see. Okay, 42-22. Okay. Okay. Pilot, it's your it's your turn first. Shit. I know my fucking gun don't do shit against these things, but we're gonna Yeah, you're at long range, so if I were you I'd aim and fire to contra contract the uh cause that way it'll be plus zero. Okay. Yeah, I'm Which gonna one do are that. you aiming at? The three soldiers? One of the three soldiers or the Praetorian? I'm aiming at the Praetorian, the big the big motherfucker, I, even though I probably should shoot the ads, and I know my bullets aren't gonna do shit anyway, so. Okay, go ahead. Let's do that. I miss. Oof. Yep, your shot goes wild and ping into the resin surrounding you. Shit! Mary Bailey, what do you want to do? I'd like to throw a grenade at it, see how it... Uh, let's... Into a... Wait, actually, that is too far, ain't it? Do you want to do your smart gun? Yeah, yes, I would. Uh, do you want to do full auto, or... Or do you want to just focus in on uh, one target? I'd like to just focus in on the Praetorian. Okay. Uh, are you going to aim? Uh, no point in running from this distance, so yes. So that would be okay. plus zero? Uh, plus zero, yeah. Alright, there we go. Okay, that is four, and that's gonna be, uh, armor halved. Yep.
Okay, so it's gonna take two damage. All right. It's gonna shriek in pain. And uh, now it is the soldiers go. They sense a threat towards their Praetorian. So they're going to move up here. Eb. He is feeling protective over the pilot. So he is going to... Uh, yep he is gonna fire uh he's gonna fire his shotgun at this nearest soldier plug it up plug it up plug it up Okay, that is, uh, two. Whoops. Okay, so that is three damage. It takes only one, as most of the shots scatter across its armor. These guys are going to go again. This one's going to attack him. This one's going to go for the pilot. And this one is going to go for Mary Bailey. Uh, Mary, I'm going to say you've gotten the time that you spent on floor four is going to get you to back to full health. Wonderful. Okay, so this is going to be against Eb. Five. Oh, it's going to die for the queen. So it's not going to be able to do anything. Uh, because all of you guys in short range have your uh, suits. The one attacking yep. uh, the pilot. Oh, I forgot to keep... Six. This ain't good. Am uh, I allowed to um, Overwatch if I haven't? Uh... If you haven't gone yet, no, unfortunately not. Uh oh. Pilot. Yep. Not oh, like this. Armor. armor? Uh huh. You're going to need to get three successes. How do I do that? Uh, just click on armor, wherever it is, There's and then it'll automatically roll for you. Oh, I see it. Couldn't find it. I found it. Oh, did you not oh. have... That didn't roll right. <laughs> My armor's oh, at what? zero. Oh, that's weird. Because uh, you should have an ape suit, so you should have three. Let's try oh, that again. Okay. I'll let you roll though, because that doesn't count. Do you want to use a story point to get it I to don't three? Have, I don't have any story points anymore. Oh no. So it leaps onto you. And the last thing you see is that inner jaw as it pierces out the back of your skull, bringing, uh, spraying Cheeseburger or Ralphie with uh, gray matter and skull fragments no. as you collapse to the ground, dead. Lucy! Eve is gonna oh, go, no! Oh, not again! Scott, an oh. alien monster just killed your sister. Before you move on, I, I actually do have to, I have to ride out, but I'd be definitely down to play for the next game. 
Oh yeah, and I've got uh, other PCs. Don't worry. So all right, cool. We'll get you. Yeah, we'll get you in. Hey, thanks for letting me join, guys. Yeah, it was fun. No problem. I appreciate y'all. We Take care, game man. Having you. See yeah, ya. thank you. Well, see you. Scott, what are you gonna do? It's a great question. Scott's gonna do something stupid. I mean, he saw grenades. his sister die right in front of him, so I would forgive him. Scott is gonna try and shoot it with the prototype acid gun. Okay, I'll tell you, know, it's you not what. Gonna... You don't need to roll for it. It's not gonna do anything, but... I know. Yeah. Okay, then... The Praetorian... Ralphie, what are you gonna do? Um, let's see. So we don't know anything about this room at all, right? It's just uh, basically dark well, except for... Yeah, everything else is covered in rubble, I'll tell you that much. Can I make out where a reactor might be, or is that just... A uh, reactor is not gonna be on this floor. No, this okay. is the penultimate floor. The floor where you kill us all. Hey, um, come on, I gave you every possible tool I could. I'm going to... move... Let's go to... the right. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to move and shoot, or do you just want to move? No, I'm going to move and shoot. Okay, who are you shooting at? The creature that just killed Lucy. Okay. Go ahead. It's going to be uh, medium range, so... Or, yeah, medium range. So it'll be a minus one total. Even though the pulse rifle's range is long? Yeah, that just tells you how far it can feasibly shoot. Or, you know what? I'll give you short range on this, because uh, this is going to be hard enough as it is. Nice. So that's going to be... Do you want to knock it back, or do you want to do just three damage? It hasn't been hit yet at all, has it? Uh, let me see... This one, I believe. No, I believe it. It was. Uh, it was hit for one damage. So it is. Uh... Let's see. So seven right now, and then. Uh... Okay, so it is gonna take two damage from that, and it is going to, so, you fire at it, and, uh, it goes, as blood splashes across the resin walls. John Kane, it is your turn. What do you want to do? Let's see. <clears throat> I can't... You might want to try and use, uh, a weapon of some sort. I can't shoot at one um, that's in engaged range with Mary, you right? You can try your flamethrower, because you've had that for the whole time and you haven't used it. Would I hit Mary, though, if I used the flamethrower? Uh, I would say she could jump out of the way with a mobility check. All right, let's use a flamethrower. Yep, yeah, so you target, target centering the Praetorian. Will that also hit the alien, the soldier? Uh, in it'll hit the one directly in front of you, yeah. It'll hit yeah, that as well. The straight line, yeah. Okay, let's see that. Incinerator. Actually, I'll let, yeah. I'll, uh, if she ducks, uh, does Mary have a story point? No, I've used my... Does, any, who, does anybody have a story point? Scott has a story point. Does he want to use it to let her leap out to here? So that he can target everything in this zone? Scott is going to do that. Okay. 
See, I'm being nice. I'm letting you guys use your story points super liberally. So, yeah, now fire your uh, incinerator. Okay. It's going to hit everything in this room. Three success. Nice. Okay, so that is... Uh, That's a good shot. Two, three, four. So, let's see. Against all of them. Would I have gotten another story point for this session? I don't. I may have used one last session. Uh, oh. Yeah, well then, yeah, you would have another story point. Okay, so okay. this one is going to take four damage. Or, yeah, two, three, four. So that's going to take it down to four. This one, let's see what it's going to take. It's going to take four damage. And then the Praetorian. Is going to take three. Give me a second, I'm just going to... This is insane. So it's going to take three, and that's going to take it down. And now roll fire intensity nine. So roll nine d6. Okay. Okay, and then... Okay, so both of these guys, the fire does nothing as their armor manages to shrug it off, but uh, let's see what happens with the Praetorian. It takes another damage. It is going to uh, run over here and hide. And now her turn can be deleted. Mary, what do you want to do? Um, I'm assuming everyone of relevance is within frag grenade range, correct? Uh, pretty much, yeah. All right. Oh yeah, and also, uh, John Kane, remember, you can shoot frag grenades from your assault rifle. Yeah, I was going to, but they closed the distance before it became my turn. Yeah, that's fair. I'm just letting you know. I think I'll just use a smart gun again on this one closest to me. You gonna aim? If I have the option to. Yep, I'd say aim in full auto, because that way, uh, if you get extra successes, you could target a Jace, you could target nearby guys in the same zone. So you could technically get them both. I will do that. So Stress yeah, up take to yourself. Three. A... Yep, and then uh, plus, plus two, two on your uh, on your roll. Yep. Ugh. Stinks. These vi dice are virtual. I can't burn them. <laughs> yep. So that's gonna be uh, roll me your panic. Okay, you're fine, so nothing comes of it. But uh, you're going to do potentially three damage to the nearby one. Wait, if I panic, does that mean I uh, lose a reload? Uh, yes. How many reloads did I have for this thing? Uh, I believe two total. Two, it wasn't in the so notes. one left. Okay. Whoops. Both of these Xenomorph soldiers appear to be near death. This one is going to jump at the scientist. And this one's going to jump at Ebb. This is against Ebb. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, poor Ebb. 
How many times does this roll the six? One. So it's going to be. T it, he just needs to negate two damage. Okay, that's one, but he has a special talent called Resilient. So he is going to uh, roll a base dice equal to his strength, and if he gets at least one success, he's fine. He doesn't, but he's going to use his story point to live. And then the one against Scott, let's see. One. Everybody within medium range, which is all of you, get plus one stress level. Okay, Eb, it's his turn. It's not quite in point bank, so he's gonna step back. And he's gonna fire his shotgun again. Damn. He missed. Oh well. He did what he could. It's gonna jump at him again. Four. Capture for the hive. Let's see. And it misses entirely. And then this one's against, uh, Scott. Five. Die for the queen. So it is going to, uh... Okay, so, uh... Roll me armor, uh... John Kane and Mary each roll me armor. Okay, so, uh... Mary, your armor's gonna go down to three. And you're gonna take one damage. John, your armor is going to stay at where it is, but you're going to take two damage. All right, down to one. Okay. Scott. Wait, who's down to one? I'm down to one. Oh, you got full health when you, uh, during, during the time okay. that you healed on floor four. I'll be back to three then. So you would be down to four, I think. Scott, what do you want to do? Mm, it's a great question. I really can't do much. I think Scott's just going to get out of the way so that John can shoot at them. Okay. The Praetorian is uh, still healing up. But you can hear it... Uh... in the distance calling out maybe for reinforcements you don't know okay Ralphie it's your go what are you gonna do um can I shoot at the one that's engaged to Eve yup do you want to aim yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, so that'll be a total of plus one, because it's minus one for medium range, plus two for aiming. Nice. You gonna put that into extra damage? Yep. Okay, so it saves one of them, but it dies. Because it only had one health left. All of those soldiers are dead. We're still in initiative, though. So, John Kane, what do you want to do? Alright, so... Guessing I can't see the Praetorian anymore at this point. 
Do you want to move uh, towards it? Because hmm. uh, once you get to uh, certain range, he definitely range, let us survive guys, that one uh, at the end. To reveal a certain area. All right, I'm gonna move towards it. Okay, go ahead. Move up to two zones, so like you could probably move up to like here-ish. They all said okay. I'd shoot my eye out. Praetorian, you sense from the darkness that it recognizes you as the one it heard it most. And it's gonna come out. You see that some of its wounds have actually healed up a bit in the mere time that you uh, have been uh, taking care of its sentries. Whoops. <laughs> I'm trying to And it appears that workers have been uh, taking care of the rubble problem mostly. <clears throat> now uh, Bloody Mary, what do you want to do? Um Does anyone have a turret left? I think Scott I might have one. Because I know there's one left. Or two I do left. have one, yeah. You want to set it up? Well, once you start on your initiative. Yeah. Uh, how close can I get and still be able to fire? Uh, well, you could get in the same zone with it, but then it'll be immediately able to attack you. Uh, you're able to fire at it right from where you are right now. Uh, or, oh, oh, sorry, I thought you were, I thought it was John Kane talking, uh, let's see, your weapon is, uh, extreme range, so you can technically target it from anywhere, it's just you're gonna suffer penalties. Uh, but, smart gun uh, says long, but I'll take it. Oh, apart, long right? range, so then, uh, you have to be at least, uh, within three zones, so one, two, th you'd have to move up, uh, one zone, I think. So what that'd be about. That'd be, like, here? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Yep, so you move up there. Uh, you won't be able to aim, but you'll be able to fire, and you'll be at long range, so it'll be uh, minus... It'll be minus two. All right, I'd like to do that. Go ahead. Nice. Oh, you want to put dude. those all into extra damage? Yes. Okay, so that's three, four, five. It takes three damage. And it nice. is going to shriek and move out of sight and leap out of sight. Meanwhile, Three soldiers appear uh, from below. They move to a, into attack formation. Let's see, what does he have? Give me a second. Ab. He is going to, uh, move to here, so that he's in short range. And, uh, he's gonna fire his shotgun. And he misses. What a shame. Nice job. Okay, Scott, what do you want to do? Well, I'm really not that useful. 
you have things you can do. You can start setting up the turret. You can move and start setting up the turret. Because you know that the Praetorian is in this direction. Yeah. I guess I'll move here. Okay. You're gonna start. You gonna start setting up the turret? Yeah, I'll start setting it up. Okay. I would think maybe set up the Whoa. turret like uh, there, and we'll like run back behind it. I don't know. Not a bad idea. But how do you know the Praetorian is going to come back after you at the same direction again? You might need to be aggressive. We'll see. But now, Ralphie, it's your turn. You see a Xenomorph soldier coming right after you. Um, well, I'm going to move there and then shoot at the one at the bottom corner there. Okay. Yep, so that's still short range, so just uh, fire standard. Nice, you got a hit, so that's going to be... Let's see, where is it? Okay, some of it is gonna, some of the damage is gonna be uh, deflected, but it's still gonna punch a hole through it, and it is not happy. John Kane, it's your go. All right. If I use the incinerator, could I hit the two in front of me? I'll let you. I'll let you okay. just because uh, this is a boss battle and it's gonna go on too long if I keep. All right, let's just do, do a sweep with the flamethrower. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll let you do it. Okay, one. So they're gonna take each uh, potentially two damage. Okay, one of them takes one damage. One of them takes two. This one takes two, so that's gonna be fire intensity. Seven. Okay, now roll me uh roll me fire intensity nine. So ninety-six. Okay, so that's one. This is for the one on top. This is for the one in the middle. Okay, both of them uh, take a damage. Very nice. The Praetorian seems to be busy uh, letting itself heal. Now, uh, Mary Bailey, what do you want to do? Huh. You could easily, uh, you could aim and, uh, aim and focus on this one. That would probably be a good idea. Uh, where do we know, or do we know, where the Praetorian actually went? I'm assuming from yeah, the you know, northwest? Yeah, you know, last you saw it, it went this direction. So. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think I'll just do that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, is it short range technically, or is it long range? Uh, it's, I'll let it be short range. Might be short range, so that's plus two. Aim. Mhm. Mm Three successes. I'd like to do all of that into damage, please. Okay, give me a second. And. Okay, so that's three, four, five. Okay, that takes it down four. You blast apart uh, 
like a lot of its torso, it shrieks in horrid pain. But it is still chugging. Just barely. Whoops. And so it's gonna move ahead up here and try and get closer to you. Uh, these two need to uh, make mobility checks. I'm gonna do one on top. One on the bottom. Okay, they both pass, but that's their turn. They're shaking themselves off fire. Eb Masterson is going to uh, fire his shotgun again. And nothing. This soldier He's terrible is with that shotgun. Close in on, uh... Actually... Yeah. Then... Because he fired at it. Okay, the one going for John Kane. That's a two. Okay, um, so John, uh, make me a mobility roll. Okay. Okay, you're fine. This is against Eeb. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. Another head bite. <clears throat> Well, you said you wanted to stop having to play PCs yourself. That is true. That's going to be two, three, four. Oh, Jesus. I think he's dead. He might be. We'll see. Yep. Okay, that is one, and then... Apparently that shotgun is two spread. Nope! He makes it. Through his resilient talent, he's okay. Wow. The last one, five, is going to eviscerate itself. So... Okay, roll me armor. Mary? Okay, you're going to take four damage. There goes my nose again. Uh, roll me, uh, roll me a T66. Fifty-five. Severed leg. <laughs> this time the acid goes right for your knee. It will be fatal within one shift if you can't get emergency medical treatment. You can't run, you can only crawl. Yay. Scott, what do you want to do? I think I was going to finish setting up the turret. Okay. So then it'll be set up at the end of this round. Yep. Ralphie, what are you going to do? I'm going to fall back uh, to Scott okay. and then take a shot. Okay, go ahead. At which one? Um, let's see. I'm going to try to go for full auto, I think. Okay. Uh, but I'll start with the one by... John, just because... Okay, where, where did you go to? I don't see you. I'm next oh, to Scott. Oh, there I see you now. Yeah, so that's going to be technically still short range, so yep, uh, make me uh, make me a ranged weapon roll and uh, let me just double check. Uh, do I need to add panic each time I do it too? Uh, yeah. 
You have to add stress uh, any time that you... Uh... Stress, I meant, yeah. And then do I add two to the roll, you said? Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, you got a plus two modification for uh, for full auto. Okay. Uh, so, roll me. Uh, roll me your panic. Seven. So that is going to be a totally. Oh, let me see. Uh, nervous twitch. So your stress level and the stress level of Scott goes up by one. And then, uh, but you still get to do the damage. So which one were you aiming for first? I'm gonna try to pick the one off. Uh... It's attacking John. Okay. It takes the damage. And that is going to be uh, Acid Splash 10, so then... Uh, make me an armor roll, uh, Kane. Okay, you're going to take one damage as the acid splashes against your skin. But now it's your turn. Okay. Let's see. I have a combat knife. Do you want to use melee against it, or do you want to try and uh, back off? Uh, if, you pass a if you pass a mobility, it won't get to attack you. My mobility... Not great. My close combat is better than my mobility. <laughs> okay, well then, uh, the only thing is, uh, I will tell you that they, uh, they are pretty well armored, and a knife is not going to do much, likely. Okay. Well, I'll try it's up to back to you. Because you could get another opportunity if you back off. If you survive, then you could get an opportunity to flame them again. All right. I'll try to back off. Okay, make me a make me a mobility. Nope. Okay, let me see what it does. Mm. Oh damn it! Because I'm nice, I'm gonna re-roll that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think your dice are weighted. I don't uh, know. They could be. They 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 definitely might be. Because I believe the half okay. of them. Okay, uh, roll me armor. You're fine. Yeah, nice. Just barely, but you're fine. So move uh, to short range. Okay, I can move. That's insane. <laughs> back here, maybe. And now blast him with the incinerator. All right, is Ev gonna be okay? Be... Yeah, I'm gonna say because at this point. <laughs> you need every tip you can get. Let's I told you you would. Fire. Okay, that's Free two, fire. three, four. Okay. Okay, that one takes four. And that one takes three. So this one... Okay, uh, make me a uh, fire intensity nine roll. Yep. Yep. Oh, man. I'm going to be nice and let you roll that again. <laughs> okay. 
That kills this one. The Praetorian is just kind of hanging out because it realizes you guys are occupied as it is. Uh, I'm going to need you to make me a stamina roll, uh, Mary. All right. And it's going to be at minus one. Ah, stink. I'll let it pass this time, though. All right. Thank you. You managed to staunch the bleeding a little bit for now. All right. But uh, until someone patches you up, you're going to need to uh, keep making those stamina rolls. Oh, yay. This soldier is going to go after Eb. And it totally fucks it up. Ab is going to counterattack. He is going to, uh... He's gonna use his cutting torch. Or is he? Let's see. Yeah, he will. But he misses as well, because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Xenomorph is going to attack him again. Two. He's going to need to make a mobility roll. Hey, he passes, so he's fine. Okay, now it is Scott's turn. You have set up your... Uh... Which way did you want it to face? Well, I was going to have it faced east, but Rothy was kind of there. Do you want to face it, say, maybe that way? That way sounds great. That's the last known location of the Praetorian. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Pointed right at it. It fires, and let's see what happens to the Praetorian. Takes three damage. You can tell this thing is fucking hurt. It is bleeding acid everywhere, but it's not done yet. In a furious bid, it is gonna start charging up. Shoot Ralphie, it in the what, face, what, Ralphie. What do you want to do? Um, Ralphie's gonna shoot. Okay, you gonna aim? Yep. Okay, go ahead. That's gonna be plus two. Okay, so roll me your panic first, just to see if it, uh... Nope, you're totally fine. So, let's see. believe that's all my reloads now. Oh, yeah, so... I mean, luckily you can take some off corpses. Or you could pick up the smart gun. Okay, so that's gonna take one damage. You do smack into its crown, but the bullet doesn't seem to do as much damage as it should. Kane, what are you going to do? Alright, let's see. Use that grenade launcher. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I could do that because you're not in short range of it. Okay, let's launch a grenade at it. Go ahead. 
Alright, um... Let me just make sure I have, uh... Oh. Trying to remember the rules for, uh... Yeah, actually, I don't know how to use a grenade. Uh, I believe, launcher. uh... Basically, you fire it, and it's gonna be attack targeting everything in the zone. And, let me see, uh... Do I just fire my pulse rifle? Um, it's gonna be... Let's see, um... So, oh yeah, so blast power nine plus one point of damage. So it does one point of damage against, uh, so for, for shooting the grenade, do I use my pulse rifles profile? Or... Um, no, you're going to roll nine dice. Okay. Just roll nine. And each success is a damage. <clears throat> The problem is grenades aren't armor piercing. It seems to shrug off the explosion. Super effective. <laughs> Does anybody have uh, story points left? Anybody? I do. Have a story point. I do. Okay. Do you guys want to let? Uh, do you guys want to use it to let the uh, the sentry gun have one last shot at it before it? Uh, Closes range. Yes. I will use mine. Yes. Okay. Can we feed it all the story points for two more bursts? <laughs> sure. You're gonna. Because this isn't even the hardest battle. <laughs> Better use our last Chuck E. Cheese tokens if we want to survive this. <laughs> yep. Okay, just one success. But it is armor piercing in full auto. So let's see what happens. Are you guys ready? Nope. Do it anyway. <laughs> it jams. Okay, it blocks two. It only takes two damage. Guess what its health is at? One. One. Two. Ah. Oh. Oh, so it's dead. Cool, mm -hmm. then I get to save my story point. As it collapses, get wrecked to the ground, dead. This xenomorph actually backs off a bit. It seems almost like disoriented. So, uh, Mary, make me a stamina roll at minus one. I forgot about that one over there. You made it. You're still holding on. This Xenomorph is going to miss its turn. Eb, I'm going to say he gets plus two because he's going to aim his shotgun. Whoops, wrong. He got two. Let's see if it's enough. It is. He finally hits it with a shotgun blast. And... It's dead. And, my friends... That is almost the end. What a cliffhanger. Almost the end. Give me yeah. a second. That's not a cliffhanger. That's just a cliff. Wait for it. I still have something to show you. Sorry, give me a second. I uh, didn't get this uh, all set up. No, you're cool. Just our buddy Robo didn't make it. He's 
Jayden. and Dreamer's original character. Uh, his name Jaden, I think. Yep. Yep. Jaden and Lucy died today. Mary you guys sigh with Mary. relief. The behemoth is dead. As you catch your breath and lick your wounds, you feel the ground shake once more. And another terrible shriek comes from below you. This one, however, sounds even larger and angrier than the prey you just slaughtered. Just as the horrible noise ends, you hear your PDA chime. Now this, I believe, I will have to import from... Let me just preview this real quick. Okay, uh, got that one. And then... Okay, here we go. Is there supposed to be something playing at the moment? Not yet. Now there is. Give me a second. Okay. I just had to move it. Okay, so you feel your PDA's chime. And... This is what you hear. This is Christopher Kringle. We've been trying to get a message to you for the past 20 minutes. The weather team picked up a massive heat spike coming from R&D lab. What's happening down there? And then... All right. See if you can find the source of... What do you mean, another freighter? Well, then tell them the village is quarantined. Override? Hold on, team. We have a situation up here. We'll contact you. That doesn't sound good. And that, my friends, is the end of Act 2. That was intense. <laughs> a lot more deaths this time, huh? Yeah. Just a tad. I had to give you every edge I could, and it still was barely enough, huh? Mary yep. Bailey is uh, in rough shape with a missing leg. And no nose. What? You guys want to oh, hang yeah, around no for nose, a minute? Yeah. Uh, no nose. I'm probably going to read. Uh, what are you talking stuff. about, smooth skin? <laughs> what? It's a good thing that there's a bunch of robot parts upstairs. But how are you going to get upstairs? That's, that's the real question. That's cr that is a great question. Nah, don't I'd... need to worry about that. Just rip one of the turrets off of its base and just duct tape it to my leg. <laughs> no, just uh, cut cut off the other leg and uh, put her on the uh, on the turret uh, oh, on the geez. turret mounting. <laughs> 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 Somebody just carries her and just places her down. <laughs> Did you guys enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, better or worse than the first act? Far, far better. Yeah, a lot better. It was a lot of twists and turns. Yeah, I'd say uh, far better. I don't entirely remember the first one emotionally, so regardless, I, guess... I do feel it was better, but to what degree, I do not know. Yeah, so I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you guys, anything in particular you really didn't see coming? I'm just curious. Falling through the floor. Yeah. That, yep. That, yeah, that one did kind of spoil Mary's original plan. Yep. I mean, part yeah. of it was uh, I had to have the fun of just showcasing the power of the Praetorian. Yeah. Uh, part of it was uh, actually a writing a uh, a writing uh, tool so that I wouldn't have to write descriptions for a whole bunch of more rooms on the fifth floor. Because if it's covered in rubble. That's I don't have joke. anything for you guys to explore. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... The, uh, the android elves. Yep, you guys didn't Possibly. expect that. Yeah. I, I was expecting something to be up with the elves. But... Actually, but not... that did catch me off guard as well. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm glad, because that was my, uh... That and the buddy thing were my two things that I wanted to make sure were total, like, 
holy fuck moments for my players. That's legit. Because now the whole thing with Buddy and the EMP uh, changes. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and now uh, we're really screwed. Maybe. I mean, uh, you guys will have more PCs to... Uh... Are we? What? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Because the thing is, I have to write you guys a third act, regardless. So... And keep in mind, I'll, I'll give you a hint. The Praetorians is, is uh, out of the three big things that you're going to have to face, it was the least tough. Well, that's great to Save know. that last turret. Yeah, it wasn't so hard once we shot a minigun at it. <laughs> yep, keep in mind, uh, the original plan was to have it spawn three soldiers with it whenever it got down to another third of health. So... I kind of, uh, I had to readjust balance on the fly after I realized how much uh, the Xenos were kicking your asses. I mean, they just love to put their tongues through our heads. Yeah, that was partially the fucking rolling. Like, holy shit. I, it, this rolling has just really wanted us to die. Yeah, although to be fair, since nobody technically really died on the last game, I kind of felt like I had to start ramping up the uh, the, the stakes. Yeah. But uh, that said, this is, uh, I think this is surprisingly well. I mean, what, we got three deaths? I believe so. Yeah, so yeah. that's not bad at all. And uh, I've already got, you know, the uh, we've got Arnie and we've got Macaulay Culkin. And I can probably come up with some more. Because uh, uh, anybody who is not here, I have uh, I have some ideas for a uh, a two pronged story uh, for Act Three that can uh, bring you guys together. Uh, that'll be really fun. Sounds good. Yeah, it'll be a while, yeah, but uh, yeah, just I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Already. Yep, and because uh, I also have some custom art that I have to wait for for uh, for Act Three. But yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it, and. Uh, Cheeseburger, whenever you get the chance, if you could send me a, a recording of this uh, on the stream, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll download it and get it to you tomorrow or yeah, in a couple whatever days. Whatever is fine. Uh, but I'm glad you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed crafting everything uh, along with Protector of Jam. It was him on that audio for, uh, by the way, the reason it was... Uh, the reason I had to integrate it last minute was because uh, he literally recorded it while we've been streaming. What an absolute legend. Oh, that's funny. That's yeah, he awesome, deserves though. he deserves the most clout and applause out of everybody. Like, even me, like, he's managed this just as much as I have. The man is an incredible artist and just, he knows how to tell a story. So, yeah, he anyways, popped up in chat for a minute. Glad to hear it, because uh, I think he deserves to see uh, as the outcome of his work as uh, as much as anybody. But yeah, I'm gonna uh, head off. I hope you all had fun. And uh, again, if you guys have uh, any ideas for what you want for like personal agendas or any just like RP ideas for your characters for your final act, don't hesitate to let me know because I'm always free guessing it as much as anybody else. So. It's always good to have ideas from the character, uh, the person playing the character. So, yeah. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Have a great night, everybody. And uh, don't let the face huggers bite. <laughs> All right. Good night, Bye, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, thanks for sticking around, everyone. That was a lot of fun. A little bit later than I was expecting, but uh, it's definitely worth it. But yeah, we're going to go raid Bungusly now. This looks like he's playing Pummel Party, and uh, pretty sure that's where Robo went. So we'll uh, we'll follow him over there.